Welcome to St. Pius High School from St. Pius High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. It should be a great matchup and a big rivalry game between the St. Pius Lancers and the Crystal City Hornets here at Father Dalton Stadium. The coolest game ball delivery I have ever seen. I don't care if the president brought it in. They just delivered the game ball via a skydiver. That is the coolest thing I think I've ever seen at a high school game. That was impressive, and that absolutely has to be a first here at Jefferson County for a football game. Uh, yeah, well, and apparently I guess they did it. They did do it last year, and uh, here at St. Pius, and they they had a little bit of issue. So uh, I, I guess they had a problem with people that on the field during it. So the guy kind of got injured while he was trying to deliver it. So they had to make sure everybody was off the field. But he came <laughs> soaring in here, right, right over the uh, the east end zone. There, excuse me, the western end zone, right over the western. Um, the, the west end zone, the west field goals. Not, it didn't go through the goal post. That would have been That would have cool. been really impressive. But, uh, yeah, that would, that would have been a little bit dangerous. So right over the west end zone, landed right at about the 40-yard line, had the game ball tucked to injury. He looked pregnant. It was actually but, yeah, So that was very cool. Well, what a game we have for you tonight. The Crystal City Hornets here in town for their game against the St. Pius uh, Lancers, and you know this is a big rivalry game. But these are pretty. This, this is a pretty big game, pretty important. Oh, it always has been. Crystal and Pius, they've always been very comparable in size. They've always gone at it in every sport there is. Crystal City, they're going to be fired up to play spoilers tonight at the homecoming for St. Pius. Senior night for the boys from St. Pius, they're going to be fired up. There should be kids flying all over this field tonight. Not only is it a big game because it's a big rivalry game and these are two teams that know each other very well, but, uh, you know, St. Pius, they're still undefeated in the conference play, and, you know, we weren't sure what we were going to see out of them but because but they're still a pretty young team. They've got a sophomore quarterback, sophomore running back, but uh, they lost their first two games of the season to very good teams. They fired off five wins in a row, four of them in conference play, and, uh, you know, they're undefeated in conference play. They have a chance at a conference championship. Absolutely. That wing tee offense really lit up in week three, and they're averaging over about 40 points a game since then and doing very well on the defensive side of the ball, too. Crystal City, we understand that they've had to go to a freshman quarterback due to injury, but sophomore quarterback on the Pius side. Let's see if the underclassmen, what they can do. Yeah, it, uh, just, a, just a freshman is the, uh, the Crystal City quarterback. It will be. Uh, excuse me here. It will be Brent Hibbets, just it just a freshman, five foot seven, 133. Not a very big guy, but uh, came in at the end of that uh, game last week. And uh, you know, it's it's uh, you could be young, but you know, th they surprises happen. This is a young St. Pius team, and you know, this is the this is the kind of game where you might get a surprise just because. This was the only win on the field that Crystal City had last last year. They had two wins. They had two wins. One of them was by forfeit. The other was to the St. Pius team. So this is a game they get very excited for and, and a game that I know they certainly think they can win. Oh, absolutely. And this freshman quarterback, when we were down on the field talking to the coaches before the game, he was warming up and throwing some passes. He's got a nice arm. He was putting the ball down field 20, 30 yards on a rope. So it looks like he might have something going here. The young man's going to learn under the gun. St. Pius is the home team. Crystal City is the visitor. We are here at St. Pius High School for senior night here at St. Pius High School. It is also homecoming. Uh, they don't have a court here. They don't have any uh, escorts or courts like that, but they do have uh, homecoming, lots of tents and uh, uh, faculty back, faculty and former and alumni back. Crystal City has chosen to receive the opening kick. So St. Pius in gold pants, blue navy blue jersey top with gold numbers and navy blue helmets with the number on the side of the helmet. Crystal City in red pants with a white stripe across the fr front and in back to the side. White jersey tops with red numbers, red helmets, and white CC on the side of the helmet. Back to receive the kick for Crystal City, Andrew Saudi and Donovan Williams. Getting set to kick it away for St. Pius is the picker Brendan Withrow. A left-footed kicker places the ball at the 40. He is set to kick it away. St. Pius kicking from our right to our left. It's a good kick on a bounce at the three-yard line and roll into the end zone. And that is well St. Pius, excuse me, Crystal City will start their first drive of the game at their own 20-yard line. Very impressive kick. That's probably uh, one of the better kickers we've seen this year next to Travis Sprawl. You know, this uh, This is the, you know, they talk about a big rivalry game. C Crystal City has won the last nine in a row against St. Pius. St. Pius has not defeated the Crystal City Hornets since 2003. 
So you think that St. Pius wants to win this game? That's unusual to schedule a team you've lost that many in a row to on homecoming. You're usually looking for maybe a, a good chance of a win. So Brent Hibbett's in the quarterback. Four wide receivers out for Crystal City. Takes the snap, flips it out to the backfield. That is Keon Prater, and he runs it to the right side. He's not going to get much. To get maybe a gain of one on the play. Keon Prater, six foot one, 192 pounds. He is a big guy at, for a small school like this. You don't get a lot of very big guys like him, but he has great size. Six one, 190 pound running back. That's big at any high school level. That's a good size that's, running back. That's college size. Yes, it is. Same formation here again. No gain on the play. Second and 10, Crystal City from their own 20 yard line. Handed off to Prater again. He is hit immediately in the backfield, and the St. Pius defense swarms. No gain on the play again for Prater. Get it back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third and 10. That's textbook how you teach defense. First guy stood him up. Three more players came in and finished off the tackle, and they're all wrapping up really well. So third and 10 here for Crystal City. Looking over to the sideline for the play call. Ken Wyke is the head coach of Crystal City. Jerry Woods is the head coach for St. Pius. Crystal City coming into this game 1-6 overall, 0-4 in conference play. Three receivers to the left side now, one to the right. Ball near the right hash. Snap back, Hibbets looking to throw it left. Going to throw it, and he hits the man, and it's complete, and it's a first down for Crystal City. Still moving. A good throw and catch there, but to Andrew Saudi. A big first down. You know that, that that's that's a senior wide receiver there for Crystal City. You know you needed 10 yards. He got out there, got open, made the catch, got the first down. I was surprised to see him, the freshman quarterback throwing on the third play of the game. That was a very nice throw in between two defenders. Put it right down the seam and right on his hands. That was a very nice throw. Three receivers, excuse me, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hibbets in the shotgun again. Snap back, the hand it off to Prater, runs over his own guy, now he's gonna cut to the right side, and he's gonna pick up a couple yards. You're listening to KJFF, Festus Crystal City, Imperial DeSoto. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Kat Curley and Renee Brenna and Matt West are back at our KJF studios doing all the hard work back there. Corey Johnson is the cameraman for KJF Web TV. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. We're here at St. Pius High School, second and eight coming up for Crystal City. Looking over towards the sideline for the play call. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hibbets in the pistol, Prater behind him, snapping back, throwing left side, and it's batted down and incomplete. Batted down by the defensive end for St. Pius. That is uh, number, that is number 81, Jesse Studevin. He just got up there and swatted it down. St. Pius has come out in a 3-4 defense. You know, you don't see a team play with three down linemen in high school. He must think that he has an advantage there with those three to really put pressure on this quarterback. Well, and you look at them, they're very big offensive linemen. Studevin, very big guy, six foot four. Dropping back on a throw it. Now he's gonna have to scramble his Hibbets. Gets to the left side, he's gonna be chased down from behind. And that is Studevin, chased him down from behind and brought him down for no gain. And that'll bring up fourth down. Did a great job of getting it, releasing that tackle, getting off the blocker, and going out there and making that ankle tackle from behind. It's a good thing he did, too, because there was about 10 yards of green space up that left-hand side. That is going to bring up fourth down for Crystal City. They will bring on the punt team number nine for the Hornets, Drake Childers, back to boot it away. Trison Thornton set to receiver for St. Pius. Kick is away. It's a good one. Thornton receives it, ball off his chest, drops it, drops it, picks it up. Flag is thrown, cuts it to the outside. Now he's trying to run back behind him, and it's going to be brought down at the 40. That was actually Isaiah Hennessy, not Trison Thornton. I apologize. Isaiah Hennessy fielded the ball off his chest, dropped it. There was a flag on the play. He had he had it up to about the 45, and then he turned around, ran backwards, lost a couple yards on the play, but a return of maybe two yards. But there is a flag on the play. I got to throw. I think Ken Week has got to be pretty happy with the way the freshman quarterback played on that first series. First, he finished the game last week. It's his only real experience, but he moved the ball pretty well. The initial call is going to be a, an illegal block in the back on St. Pius. So that's going to back them up 15 yards after a, not a great return there by Isaiah Hennessy. And so St. Pius will start in their own territory at their own 26-yard line. 8.24 remaining here in the first quarter 
Nothing, nothing is the score between St. Pius and Crystal City. Pius with the ball at their own 26-yard line, first and 10. Mickey Caroli is the young sophomore quarterback for the St. Pius Lancers. Won the starting job as a freshman. He goes under center, one right receiver out. They're going to hand it off. It's going to be a, they're going to, they're going to throw a flag immediately, and they're going to blow the play dead. A dead ball foul. Illegal procedure on St. Pius. Well, St. Pius has had one offensive play here, and that doesn't even count. They've had two penalties already. Not the way you want to start it if you're St. Pius. A little too worked up, a little too excited with homecoming, senior night, and everybody being here in the big crowd. Maybe they just jumped a little bit on that first one. Maybe they'll calm down here now. St. Pius breaks the huddle. That backs them up to their own 21-yard line, first and 15 to go. Caroli under center. Going to hand it off. That's Weiss on the right side, but he's not going to get anything. He's back. I think he might even lose a yard or two. Nice job by the Crystal City defense. Lancer handoff goes number 22, Lancer. They did a good job of getting out and sealing on that left end and shutting him down. No place to go on that run. That was actually Lance Irvin on the carry, number 22. Lance Irvin on the carry for St. Pius. Loss of yard on the play, second and 17 for the Lancers. Need to get to their own 36-yard line. They have the ball at their own 20. Second and 17. One receiver to the right. Three men in the backfield. Handed off up the middle, and it's gonna he's gonna be stuffed and pushed back. A bad run there. That is number 49, Chris Feiler, and he's gonna lose some yardage. Lost about four on that one. They're playing really well on the defensive edges, Crystal City. They're keeping that inside, not letting them have that edge. Well, the Crystal City defense, after uh, getting one first down on their first possession, has stepped up here, and they're pushing St. Pius backwards. They've gone backwards more than they've gone forwards here as St. Pius. Third and 17, 7.09 remaining, no score. Caroli dropping back, going to dump it off to Filer in the left flat. He's got room to run. Cuts it to the sideline with room to go to the 35. Pushed out of bounds. A good pick up there by Chris Filer, and I think he's going to pick up the first down. Very nice run. That was a touchdown saving tackle right there to knock him out of bounds because that was absolutely the last defender. They gave him the spot on that one and the first down. First down. So on third down, just like Crystal City did, the young quarterback finds an open receiver. Chris Filer, he is a senior. So the so for the second time we've seen it from both time, both teams. Third and long, and the sophomore uh, quarterback finds a senior receiver to pick up the first down. First and ten from the 38. Handoff is up the middle, and he won't get much. One thing I can tell you already, but I'm impressed by Mickey Crowley, is he carries out his fakes all the way through until the end of the play. That is absolutely one of the keys when you're running the wing tee or an option offense. You have to carry out those fakes. You have to sell it on every single play to keep your cornerbacks and your defensive tackles honest. It's the only way it's going to work. Second and seven coming up here for Crystal Sardia. Three-yard carry on the play. Ball is at the St. Pius 41. They hand it off up the middle to Filer, and he is hit immediately. Number 56 for Crystal City, Cody Sprague. He got through in the backfield. He met him immediately. And that's going to be a loss of one for St. Pius. That almost looked like a blown assignment because he just blew right through that gap on that one. I don't think he was touched going through the line. Ball on the St. Pius side of the 40 of their own 40-yard line. Third and eight to go. One receiver to the left side. They hand it off. Now they hand it off again. It's a it's a uh, end around. That's his Studovan, and he takes the end around, and he gets pushed out of bounds, but he picks up the first down. A nice carry there by Jesse Studovan. A double reverse on that one to come around the corner. Well disguised and well run. That was a big band coming around that corner on that one. So Crystal City picks up the first down again. And they take it into Crystal City territory up to the Hornet 40-yard line. They break the huddle. One receiver to the left, three men in the backfield, Caroli under center. Hands it off to Thornton, cuts back to the inside. See, me, that's not Thornton, that is uh, number 22, Lance Irvin. Lance Irvin with the gear, and he picks up a couple. Apparently, Coach Wood is the same way as a lot of these uh, gentlemen that run this wing tee offense. They'll hand the ball off to anybody that's got a number below 35. 
Just going to bring up a second inning. Substitution coming into the game for St. Pius. There he brings in the play call. That is number eight, Alex Rarick. And Rarick goes out to split out wide to the left side. And three men in the backfield again. Same formation for St. Pius. They'll use it every time. And off is a double reverse again here. Studevin to the left side to the 40, to the 35, past the 30. He's going to be close to the first down. Another good carry for Studevin. And he got hit, and he is slow to get up. He's down on his knees. And he is his left knee. I think he is hurting. He the defensive player came in pretty low and caught him down right about the list below the knees. That's a hard way to get taken down. He's a he's a good sized young man oh, too. He is he is huge, six foot four, two hundred and twenty pound tight end. But they hand the ball to him. Two, the only the two times we've seen him on offense is being pick, pick, picking up on a, a reverse carry. If I was back on cornerback or safety and I had to come up and take him down, I'd be hitting him low too. You'd think twice about it too, right? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I'd be aiming for the knees. Yeah, low, go low. First and 10, St. Pius. They do pick up the first down. Ball is at the Crystal City 27. One received to the left, three men in the backfield. Caroli hands it off. That's Irvin again up the middle, and he'll pick up about five on the play. Nothing fancy about that. Irvin takes it up for five yards. Crystal is really committing to the run. They're putting eight in that box, trying to shut down that middle. Tackle made for the Hornets. Yeah, more like a gain of four on the play. And that brings up second and six for St. Pius. Ball at the 24-yard line for St. Pius. Receiver to the left side is Rarick. Three men in the backfield, Caroli under center. And we get a flag before the play, and they blow it dead. And it's usually when that happens, it's an illegal procedure penalty on St. Pius. Usually when they blow it dead like that, that is the case. Ball start against St. Pius. And that is the case. So St. Pius moved the ball all right here, but uh, already three penalties for 25 total yards. They're well within field goal range. We saw the leg of their kicker, but I'm sure Coach, he wants to start this game with seven on that board. Penalty. That's going to bring up a second and 12. Second and 12 for St. Pius from the Crystal City 29. One receiver to the left side. Four down linemen for Crystal City. Four linebackers. Three defensive backs. Caroli dropping back to pass. Going to throw it on, dump it off of the flat. The filer gets a good black. Cuts back to the inside at the 20 to the 15, 10. Cut down at the five yard line. A great touchdown saving tackle made. I believe that was, was Cody Warren on the play. What a, what a great run there by Chris Filer. That was a great cut back on the left hand side to lead the defender just laying on the ground. If that didn't, he didn't get that right ankle to bring him down there. That's six. A very important saving tackle there by Crystal City. First and goal here for St. Pius from the about the seven yard line. Caroli going to hand it off up the middle, and there's not going to be much. I believe that is Filer, and he picked up maybe two yards on the play, takes it up to the five yard line. They've been doing a good job of controlling Filer, Pius's leading rusher so far in this game, but on the pass plays, he's already got 36 yards and two first downs. Second and five for St. Pius. Second and goal from the five for the Lancers. Moving from left to our right. Grass field here, one of the very few grass fields left here in Jefferson County. The end zone is painted very nicely. Caroli pitches it out to Lervin, to the left side. He runs into the back of his own blocker. He ran into the back of Feidler and he fell down at the four. Irvin takes it down to the four yard line. They've got the, uh, it's kind of the uh, Argyle pattern, if you will. Diamond diamond pattern painted into the uh, end zones here with the white white diamond and then the gold diamond, white diamond, and then navy blue around it. Caroli under center, receiver is to the right, three men in the backfield. Second and goal from the four, and they blow it dead again. That's going to be another illegal, illegal procedure penalty on St. Pius. That one came from the near side line, Judge. Yep, it's a legal procedure. So that will back St. Pius up to their own nine yard line. Boy, St. Pius would probably already be in the end zone right now if they haven't had so many penalties. That's already four total penalties for 30 yards. So let's help them out. If St. Pius is wanting to control the clock in this game, they've definitely done it on this drive. They have eaten up a tremendous amount of time. Yeah, 2.20 left here in the first quarter. This is only the second offensive possession, one for either team. 
Taking plenty of time. Caroli under center. Receiver is to the right. Hard count. They got Crystal City to jump. Good hard count by, by Mickey Caroli. He got the entire Crystal City defensive line to jump off sides so they gets the five yards back. That was an excellent job on the hard count. You could even hear him barking out the signals up here, and he got at least three of them to jump on that one. Hard to disguise when three guys jump, isn't it? <laughs> Second and goal. Excuse me, third and goal, St. Pius from the four. Caroli rolling to his right side, looking for Filer. Going to let it go, and it is intercepted by Crystal City in the end zone. They'll take it out to the six-yard line. Caroli makes the tackle, and an interception in the end zone for Crystal City. That was just a – that was for uh, Caroli. He should have just ran that out of bounds and uh, not let that one go. Yeah, he kind of had a little indecision there. He did have a receiver to the back. Unfortunately, the close receiver, the one closest to him, he wasn't even really looking for the pass on that play. He was looking more for the block for, for him. So Caroli throws the interception down inside their own goal in the in the own in the end zone. You know we've talked about the young the young quarterback. He's pretty mature, but you know you see a young mistake there. So Crystal City goes on offense. Hibbets in the shotgun. Actually, it's more of a pistol. Prater standing right behind him, dropping back, looking left, going to throw, and he hits a man, and it's complete. And that is to number 20, Andrew Saudi. I'm impressed so far with this freshman quarterback and the sophomore quarterback from St. Pius. Got a couple of very good young quarterbacks. Brent Hibbets on the season coming into this game, 9 for 16, 121 yards, no touchdowns and an interception. That's coming into this game. Andrew Saudi bit his main target, 33 catches coming into this game, 33 catches, 409 yards and three touchdowns. Second and six for Crystal City from their own 14. Maybe their own 11. Flip it out to Prater. Gets a cut back and block, nice block back to the middle. And a nice run by Keon Prater up to the 16-yard line. About a four-yard pickup there for Keon Prater. He is a big load coming through that line. He had a very nice cut back, showing some agility from the big man. There's some... You know, for, for two smaller teams number-wise, there are some big players on this team. You look at Keon Prater for Crystal City. You look at uh, Studevin for St. Pius. And they're playing out of what are traditionally referred to as the skill positions, the running backs and the things like that. Wide receiver. Prater picks up the first down. It's first and 10 Crystal City from their own 14-yard line. It's in the own 16-yard line. Hit it, takes the snap, looking to throw, dropping back over the middle. It's Saudi, it's complete. Cut back to the middle to the 25, still stays up. Nice run by Andrew Saudi after the catch. He picks up the first down. That was a very impressive job of setting up that screen right in the middle of the field. Pius flew through, bid on it. He found his receiver, and then it was a great run after the catch to pick up an extra four or five yards. This game brought to you by Mercy Hospital Jefferson, the Bank of Bloomsdale and Crystal City, and F.W. Harder Plumbing. First and 10, Crystal City from their own 29-yard line. Hibbets in the shotgun, takes the snap, looking to throw it, looking deep, got to throw it over the middle, it's intercepted. That might have been uh, tipped at the line of scrimmage by St. Pius. I think number 42 got him right in the chest as he was trying to throw that ball. You know, St. Pius, they're certainly expecting the pass. They're only rushing three three linemen. They, they go with the three down linemen, and they don't really bling a blitz. They were only rushing three on that play, and they still got a hand on the pass. Yes, they did. They're just comp they're compacting the pocket on him very well. Occasionally, they will bring a, a linebacker from another slot, but they're doing a good job of controlling the middle of the field right now. Chris Filer, Jesse Eimer. Down on the uh, on the line for Crystal City. If it's dropping back, there's a flag on the play, rolling to his left, still looking to throw, throws it over the middle, and it's completed to Saudi up to the 45. And there's there is a flag down on the play. But the Saudi picks up the first down. We'll check on the on the flag. Mike Napier also on the uh, defensive line for St. Pius. That was a good job by the young quarterback, even regardless of the flag. He took off on the run, looked like he was going to go upfield, and he spotted Saudi down on the field. He stopped short of the line of scrimmage and dumped it off for about eight, and then Saudi picked up the other eight. Illegal formation on the Crystal City Hornets, so that is going to negate the good catch and run by Andrew Saudi. You know, I'm really impressed with Saudi 
his ability for yards after catch because he's not a very big guy himself. Uh, he's tall, six foot one, but not very stocky, 160 pounds. But he does a really good job of breaking through those ankle tackles and staying upright. He absolutely does, and he's constantly going forward. He gets that six foot one frame leaning forward. He hasn't got knocked back yet. He's always picking up that extra one or two. Referees are still discussing this. The uh, head referee and I think the near line judge are still talking about it. It was an illegal formation penalty on Crystal City. Nothing, nothing is the score with 1.5 seconds left in the first quarter. So this will be the last play of the first quarter here. Nothing, nothing between Crystal City and St. Pius. They'll wind the clock and I bet they won't even get this play off. And that's gonna do it. End of the first quarter, they wind the clock. No time for a play. So that is going to do it for the first quarter of play. No score between the St. Pius Lancers and the Crystal City Hornets. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi, this is Matt Carpenter for Twin City Toyota in Herculaneum. And if you're looking for a great deal on your next vehicle, don't think twice, think Twin City. Right now at Twin City, save on a new Toyota Corolla or RAV4. Take your pick of these hot new models and get 1.9% APR financing. Plus, during October, get an additional $500 Toyota cash on new Corollas at Twin City Toyota. Just off I-55 in Herculaneum or online at TwinCityToyota.com. Don't think twice. Well, they did allow Crystal City one untimed down, and it was completed in a good pass. They take it up to the 30-yard line. So they did give them one uh, one, one, plat, one uh, play there after the uh, clock stopped wound. So that is the end of the first quarter. Nothing, nothing is the store between Crystal City and St. Pius. We will go back to a one-minute break, and we come back with the second quarter. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Festus knows how important the right pharmacy can be. From a friendly, helpful staff, knowledgeable pharmacists, to free delivery to a drive through for your convenience. It's time to look at your choices. Choose the Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Festus, located across from the post office on 116 Walnut in Festus. They always treat you right and they know what you need. Since 1974, Calm Tree has helped people suffering from alcohol and other drug abuse. Calm Tree remains committed to its mission to be an innovative, effective, and responsive community mental health center for Jefferson County. At Calm Tree, they believe in the importance of addressing issues of concern through direct patient care prevention and educational efforts. Professional care is available to you at Calm Tree with adult and adolescent programs, inpatient care, and three outpatient and aftercare locations. Call 931-2700. A very quick first quarter here at St. Pius High School. I'm Tommy myself alongside Eric Oberly. We start the second, and uh, after St. Pius used up most of the clock there in that first quarter, we go here into the second quarter. No score between the Crystal City Hornets and the St. Pius Lancers. That was a very quick first quarter. That clock just kept running the whole time. And we even had uh, 15, 20, 30 yards in penalties on top of everything else in that first quarter. So Crystal City moving right to left. Now the pass is complete to Saudi in the flat. Cuts. We get a, we get a late flag coming out. Play is over. A flag came out from the deep judge. Saudi. He picked up about three yards on the play. We'll have to see what the flag is about. It's going to be an illegal block in the back on Crystal City. So the uh, catch is going to be negated for Crystal City, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. It's unfortunate. That's where Crystal's showing their age right now and the fact that they are playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores at this point. You get mistakes like that on a downfield pass. Seven seconds into the second quarter here. No score between Crystal City and St. Pius High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Overly. Glad to have you along with us. This game brought to you by Twin City Toyota, McFarland Travel and Festus, Com Tree and Festus, YMCA of Jefferson County, Plaza Tire Service, and Medicine Shop Pharmacies. So third and 20 coming up here for Crystal City. It's a five yard, it's a 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So third and 20 here. 
Ibbets dropping back on a throw it over the middle and he hits a man and it's complete at the 35 up to the 40, still going to the 45, a great catch and run. That is number nine, Blake Drake Childers. Childers, excuse me. Drake Childers with a nice catch and a big pitching catch there from Hibbets to Childers. First catch of the night, make it count. 23 yards and a great run after the catch. These receivers are doing a good job of running after they catch the ball. And now we're going to get an official timeout. Actually, it's going to be a timeout called by St. Pius. St. Pius calls the timeout. We will take it as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Who was that on the catch? So St. Pius calls the timeout here, and uh, you know, Eric, they, I, I've really been impressed. Both of these teams have gotten into long situations, second and long, third and longs, and they've gotten the first downs. It's been pretty impressive. Yes, it has. I mean, they're throwing the ball. Crystal City has catches 14, 17, and 23 yards right there. The two, the two passes that uh, St. Pius has completed, 36 yards, third and long. They're doing a good job by the two young quarterbacks. The receivers are bringing the ball in and getting some yards after the catch to help the quarterback out. It's been impressive on the passing game so far tonight. Yeah, you know, this is a, two very different uh, styles of offense. Crystal City kind of spreads it out wide. They'll still see three full wide receivers out there, but St. Saint, uh, Saint Pius, they won that. They run that wing T offense, and, uh, you know, they run it a lot, but they have a very good quarterback. They can throw it as well. First and 10, Crystal City from their own 46-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hibbets in the pistol formation with Pr Prater. Standing right behind him. Takes a snap, hands it off to Prater up the middle, breaks through an ankle tackle, breaks another tackle, still going, and now he'll be brought down. They they didn't bring him down, but they slowed him up enough for the guys coming in behind him to uh, bring him down. Absolutely. About three, four, five guys came in to finish off that tackle. He picked up only about two or three yards on that. St. Pius has uh, brought in one of their big men, and they've switched to a four-down lineman now. A gain of two on the play for Crystal City. Second and eight, they look over towards the near sideline for the play call. Crystal City moving from right to left. They're in the, they're on, they occupy the sideline nearest to us. Second and eight, Crystal City, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Dropping back to pass is Hibbets. And now he's gonna be, he escapes the sack. He's gonna take off and run. He's gonna be brought down from behind, but he will pick up a yard or two on the play. He was able to escape the sack, and Chris Philo came up from behind him and brought him down. He went into survival mode on that because two of them had a shot at him. Couldn't get a hold of him other than the ankle, and he pulled right out of that and managed to get back and still pick up a yard. Hillsboro leads Lutheran South 7 to nothing after a 22-yard touchdown run by Chris Walsh. You know what that looks like. We had them last week. We saw one or two of those runs by Walsh. Yeah, just a, just a couple. A quarter. I, you know, I looked at that, and I thought, I saw, I thought 22, that's, that's all? Because <laughs> he had some. He had that is some a little short for him. <laughs> 22. Hibbets dropping back to pass, looking to his right. Now he's going to have to escape, and now he's going to be brought down. A big sack and a big loss for St. Bias. The ball was at the 50. They brought him down all the way back at their own 36. A big loss for Crystal City. Yeah, three of them coming in on the quarterback on that time. He never saw the defender from the backside. Before he knew it, there were four of them laying on top of him on that one. So that is going to be bring up fourth and long. It's going to bring up fourth and about seven, fourth and about 15 to go. And that'll bring, they'll bring out the punt team, Will Crystal City. Drake Childers will go back to punt it away. <coughs> and back to receiving for St. Pius, Trison Thornton and Isaiah Hennessy. It's a short punt, bounce out, bounces at the 41 yard line. St. Pius gets away from it and Crystal City will down it at the St. Pius 38 yard line. Well, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Festus, Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer, the law offices in Hillsborough, Farm Bureau agent Joe Reed in Festus, the Lowry Law Firm in Hillsborough, and Mercy Hospital Jefferson in Festus for sponsoring this game and every game that you hear here on KJFF. 
Might have a couple of defensive changes coming in for Crystal here. We'll see if Pius puts another puts there's together a, another 10-minute drive. There's a flag down on the play that I missed earlier, and they're talking to St. Pius, so it looks like it's going to be on Crystal City because they're talking to St. Pius. It looks like St. Pius is actually going to have them re-punt it. I missed the flag originally. It's on the far side of the field from us. So it looks like St. Pius is going to back them up. Illegal an illegal shift, shift on Crystal City before the kick. That's a five-yard five penalty. That'll back them up, so bring up fourth two. and... Fourth and about a long way. Long way, yeah. <laughs> Fourth and about 20 to go at Crystal City with the ball at their own 32-yard line, and they will punt it away again. Thornton's had some really big returns this year. I'm sure they're trying to get the ball into his hands. Punt is away. A little short. It's fielded by Hennessy at the 41. Cuts it outside, pushed out of bounds at the 50-yard line. So. They worked out all right. St. Pius with a little bit better field position, and they will start their drive at the 50-yard line. That was a very good punt. I'm sure that Coach from Crystal has scouted this. He knows what kind of return game they've got. He'll give up five or 10 yards on the punt if he can get a lot of height out of it so that he can get that coverage downfield to make sure they don't get those legs churning. Festus leads seven to nothing after, at the end of the first quarter. A score here, nothing, nothing. 8.56 left in the second quarter. End of the first quarter, St. Genevieve leads to Soto 14 to nothing there as well. St. Pius will start it with the ball at their own 49-yard line, first and 10. 8.56 remaining in the first half. No score between St. Pius and Crystal City. They throw it out to Thornton on the left side. Went all kinds of speed, cuts it up back towards the middle, up to the, about the 40-yard line. A great run by Tryson Thornton. There is a flag down on the play at, at about the 50-yard line. That's going to be on St. Pius. A legal block in the back on St. Pius. But we have seen a ton of penalties so far, Eric. Yes, we have. And there's another 10-yarder right there. We're at 25-30. Uh, we're, we're over 50 yards in penalties, and we've got eight minutes left in the second quarter here. Not the way you want to do it for St. Pius because their offense has been good. They've moved the ball well. They've taken all kinds of time off the clock, but nothing to show for it. They had an interception in the end zone. They were on the four-yard line when they started that play, too, after a very long time on the drive. Jared Johnson, a 75-yard touchdown run. The extra point is good for Hillsborough. They lead Lutheran South 14-7. to There's a flip to Thornton to go into the right side now. Cuts it back towards the middle, and he's only going to pick up about four on this play. Ken White, the head coach for Crystal City, very excited on the sideline. He liked what he saw there. Takes it out to the Two, three guys getting to that player, shutting down that edge. Very good job by the defense, exactly the way he wants them to do it. A four-yard carry for Trison Thornton. Takes it up to the St. Pius 44, and that will bring up second down and about 15 to go. Second and 15 exactly, actually. Three receivers to the left side, side now for St. Pius. One to the right. Thornton, the lone man in the backfield. They flip it out to him on the left side. Room to run to the 50. Breaks through to the St. Crystal City 35. Down the sideline. Pushed out of bounds. Saudi went after the ball. Pushed him out of bounds. A big run for Trice and Thornton. You know, you like that. You, it's kind of a spread look. You throw three wide receivers out there on the left side. But it's perfect because you got the three wide receivers out there and to block. And Thornton had plenty of room. He did a good job blocking downfield. Oh, absolutely. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get out there and get those seal blocks to give him the edge and down the sideline. But Crystal's doing such a good job of trying to contain that edge that he had to cut right in between the players. And he disappeared for about two seconds on that run and then just emerged with a very nice run. Same formation here again for Crystal City, switching it up a little bit. Same as they used the last couple formations. They flip it out to Thornton again. Same play to the left side. Flag on the play. Spin, spin move. He is brought down. Got to be close to the first down, but there is a flag on the play. Trison Thornton, 5'3", 135. That's what he's listed as. So that means he's probably 5'2", 120. No, no, no. You measure him in their pads and helmet. Yeah, exactly. It looks like the penalty is going to be on Crystal on St. Pius. It's unfortunate for Trison. He's had five carries tonight, but only two of them count. Three of them have been Very negated by Very similar to Corey Carr for Festus. He's had at least three touchdowns called back for touchdowns this year. No, that's just in the games we've done. Yeah, that's a hold against St. Pius. So that's a 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That'll bring up first and about 16 to go. 
for St. Pius. Looks like we're going to take a timeout. Pius. The St. Pius Lancers will call a timeout, and we will take the timeout as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer of Hillsboro is your regional law firm, offering help with many diverse areas of the law. Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer is a full-service law firm and practice with expert, experienced lawyers. When legal representation is a must, you need a law firm that you can trust. So turn to the professionals at Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer on Highway 21 in Hillsboro. Call 636-797-2693. For more information, log on to robertswootenzimmer.com. Nothing, nothing is the score here between St. Pius and Crystal City with 7.46 remaining here in the first half. We expected a low-scoring game. I think this is probably about what we expected here. Two t t teams playing very tight. To a point, yeah. Like I said, they know this wing, the wing T offense, so I expected the Crystal to be ready for it. But Pius has been averaging close to 40 a game for the last five weeks. Hit somebody. Come on. So St. Pius lines up. Now they go back to their wing T formation with one wide receiver out and three running backs in the backfield. Now they put a man in motion. Caroli hands it off to Thornton up the middle. That was an interesting, very interesting play design there. A lot of things going on there for St. Pius, but Crystal City had it sniffed out immediately. They tried to make everything look like it was going to be a pitch to go to the right, and then they just ducked underneath with Thornton, tried to use their size to their advantage and hide it behind that line. Unfortunately, Crystal did a good job of just staying in their lanes and coming across that time to shut that down. Festus tied 7-7 seven to seven with St. Charles West with 10-39 West with remaining in the second quarter. Second down and 15 to go for St. Pius. 7-10 and counting remaining here in the first half. They flip it out to Thornton, running right side, following his blocker, cuts it to the 30, and now he's going to be brought down at about the 23-yard line, excuse me, 26-yard line, and Ken Wyke is very excited again. He loves it that when, they, when they're when they able to corral Tryson Thornton. They're doing a really good job on the edges of controlling. St. Pius is really going to give him a steady dose of Thornton on this on this particular drive. He hasn't quite, we've, we, you know, we've, we've seen him have a couple of good runs, but with St. Pius on that last one, they were really able to keep him moving east and west and not allowing him to cut it upfield. Exactly. They filled those gaps that they didn't do on his 30-yard run. <laughs> now St. Pius spreads it out again. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, one tied end to the right side. Caroli in the shotgun. First time we've seen him there. They throw it out to the left side. That's Hennessy. Almost dropped it. Does make the catch. Spin moves, and he'll pick up about three yards on the play. One thing that St. Pius does is they mix up the formations unlike any other team I think we've seen this year. They absolutely do, and we've seen the wing tee offense before. Like in the R7's case, their, their set is pretty the same every time with that three straight backs. They have a little different set here at St. Pius, and they do mix it up very well here and change their formations quite a bit to confuse the defense. So that is going to bring up a fourth down and 10, and they're going to bring out the field goal unit with 543 and counting here. The kicker for St. Pius is number 14, Brendan Withrow. The kick, is, the snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good. A count that up, ball is at the 14 yard line, so that is a 31 yard field goal for Brendan Withrow, and he puts it through with 5.30 left in the first quarter. We will take a minute timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Putting your family first. Hi, this is Calvin Dantley at the Jefferson County Family YMCA. We're looking for teens ages 12 to 17 to be a part of our Teen Leaders Club. They'll have the opportunity to interact with each other and have fun while discussing topics like goal setting, financial management, community service, and even dating and relationships, just to name a few. Contact me, Calvin Dantley, and find out more about the Teen Leaders Club at your local Jefferson County Family YMCA. 931-9622 or online at www.ymcastlouis.org. Forget everything you thought you knew about buying tires and hurry in and see the gang at Plaza Tire in Festus. Why? Because Plaza Tire customers enjoy Plaza Tire's lowest price pledge. Plaza Tire service will match or beat any competitor's total tire purchase on any comparable tire. Plus tires anytime with hundreds of tires in stock. No appointment necessary on tire installations. That's Plaza Tire, the quick change artist located at 301 Festus Center Drive in Festus. 
The Brendan Withrow kickoff goes, bounces at about the two yard line and it goes into the end zone. And so a touchback for St. Pius and Crystal City will start at their own 20 yard line. I'll tell you what, Brendan Withrow, the left footed kicker, he has got a leg. Yes, he does. That's the best way in the world to do it. You don't have to worry about any kind of return man or any threat that Crystal City might have. You just kick it out of the end zone. You know they're starting from the 20 and got to go 80. Festus leads 14-7 to on top of St. Charles West. 10-10 left in the second quarter. 5-24 remaining here in the first half. 3 to nothing is the lead for St. Pius. Crystal City with the ball and another pass that's batted down by Jesse Studevin. I'll tell you what, Studevin is 6'4". The Crystal City quarterback is Brendan Hibbets is 5'7". That's just not a good matchup. No, it isn't. You can tell that the Pius uh, defensive line has been coached very well at getting those hands in the air. They make that initial push. If they can't get through, every one of them's hands straight up in the air. And they've got a lot of height on that defensive front. Yeah, you got that right. Six foot eight, six foot four, and uh, also five foot eleven. Oh, yeah, so they have some very good size, especially height-wise, on the defensive line. Five oh six remaining in the first half. Three receivers to the left side, one to the right. Hibbets dropping back to pass, going to look into the left side. It's incomplete off his hands. He's looking for Joe Ross off his hands. The throw is a little bit behind him. It falls incomplete. There is a flag down on the play. That's normal from the back judge there to call holding up in the interior line. When they spread out like that, those interior linemen get exposed. Can't get away with those grabs in there. That stops the clock at five minutes left here in the first quarter. The referees are talking about the flag down on the play. It came from the uh, umpire, the back judge. It's going to be on Crystal City. It's going to be declined oh, by St. Pius. City. It was a hold on Crystal City. St. Pius will decline it, so that'll bring up third down. Interesting move there. They'd rather take the loss of down than the 10-yard uh, penalty. They must see something defensively that they're happy with. They want to get the ball back as quickly as possible here with as much time as they can. Crystal City with the ball deep in their own territory at the 20. Third down, throwing over the middle, and it's complete. They find the man at Zach Tierney. The ball pops loose, and St. Pius recovers. That was an absolutely beautiful route. He went down the sideline, cut it across the middle, hit him right in the numbers with the pass. The defender came in, wrapped him up, and put that hand right on that ball and knocked it loose. Two really good plays. Crystal City with the, pet, with the uh, throw and the catch and the run and the defensive player from Pius stepping up and knocking that ball loose. So after St. Pius turned the ball over in the Crystal City end zone, St. Pius comes away with the turnover here. St. Vincent leads 28 to nothing. First and 10 here, St. Pius, five minutes remaining here in the first half. Three receivers to the left side. Caroli gonna throw it to the left side. He finds Hennessy with room to run on the left wing. Cuts through the middle, 20. 10, 5, touchdown! A, got it up a 36-yard pass, excuse me, 38-yard pass from Caroli to Isaiah Hennessy, and St. Pius adds to their lead on the first play of their drive. Very well-designed play. They got him out into the outside, the, the slot back, and the wide receiver stepped up and moved, made those blocks, and you have to hold off. You can't make those blocks right away. You have to wait until the pass is thrown. They separated and he ran right up the middle. He read the defensive secondary, cut it to the inside, and showed who has the wheels tonight. He just took off after that. And great blocking downfield for Hennessy. And now Withrow will come on and attempt the extra point. That play took two seconds. Well, that was not St. Pius's game plan. They had two drives that ate up about 14, 15 minutes out of the entire first half. Well, unless the clock is incorrect. Clock malfunction. That's all we want. Now the uh, St. Pius are going to do that little trick play where they put the center down and they bring the whole line to the left side. Clock issues. And if they yeah, see something that they can right exploit, we they'll snap it back and try for the touchdown. Need a new cord, guys. The gentleman sitting next to us said they were having a bit of a clock issue, so something happened there. So Hennessy is not quite as fast as we may think. What, so, he just ran the 40 and two flat? <laughs> yeah. I, I <laughs> the colleges will be looking for him. He's going now. now. They're going to throw it back, and it's in, at the touchdown. They snapped it directly to the man who was lined up as the kicker. That's Tanner Martin, who was lined up as the kicker, and who threw it in to Isaiah Hennessy for the two-point conversion. The two-point conversion is good, 
and St. Pius goes up 11 to nothing. We'll take a 30 second timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi, this is David McFarland. At McFarland Travel, we are a full service travel agency specializing in one on one service. We discuss your needs and desires, do our research, and provide you with options all within parameters that you have set. When you book online, you do all the work and then give your hard earned money to someone you will never meet and without fully knowing what your options are. Shop locally and book safely with McFarland Travel at 206 Main Street in Festus or call us at 937-5679 or toll free 888-440-5679. They will uh, they update the clock. 4.43 left in the first half. 11 to nothing is the lead for St. Pius after the two-point conversion. I missed, did you see who they threw that to? I, I missed who it was. It was number 21 that threw it, Tanner Martin. There's, there is the kickoff, and it is going to go into the Crystal City end zone. Saudi standing at his own goal line, tried to keep it out of the end zone, but he couldn't quite uh, keep it in. And so a touchback for St. Pius again. Give Saudi credit for trying to make something happen for Crystal and feel that ball and try to get it upfield. Yeah, that's, you know, that's very aggressive because, you know, in high school, as soon as it crosses the goal line, it's an automatic Anybody touchback. That's DVRing the Cardinal game, close your ears. 11 to nothing is the lead the for St. Pius. 436 right remaining between St. Pius, excuse me, 436 zero. remaining in the second quarter between St. Pius and Crystal City. Crystal City with the ball at their own 20 after the touchback from Brendan Rithrow. Snap is back, Pivots looking over the middle, it's gonna throw it deep, and it's to Chaney, and it's completed the 50, and he's gonna be brought down, excuse me, that's not Chaney, that is Joe Ross, completed to Joe Ross, a 30-yard pass is good. Boy, a great spiral, great throw. That's Thir just a good play on both sides. 37-yarder, he just split the cornerback and the safety, it almost looked like they didn't have a, a safety to the right side. They were looking wide side. He just ran down the field, put his arm up. The young quarterback was watching him the whole way and did a great job of laying that ball out there and hitting him on the run. First and 10, Crystal City from the St. Pius 41 into St. Pius territory with 420 and counting left in the first half. Snap is back to Hibbets, looking to the left side, looking to throw. Now he's on the run, gets it away, and it's going to be intercepted by Tyson Thornton at the 30. He cuts back up the middle on the return. He's going to be brought down. And another interception for St. Pius. That on Tyson Thornton. Thornton and shredded Cody Spray for bringing him down. Another turnover by Crystal City. That throw there was really influenced by the defensive line. They got out there and got hands on him just as he was trying to throw that ball downfield, and it just fluttered up there, and Tristan Thornton could run right underneath that ball and pick it off. So that gives St. Pius the ball back with 4.08 remaining in the first half. They get it at their own 44-yard line. And they go back to a different formation. Three receivers to the right. Caroli in the shotgun. Tristan Thornton on his right hip pocket. Snap is back. They're going to hand it to Thornton, running left side, and he's tripped up. And he's actually going to lose yardage on that play. Cody Sprague will get credit for the tackle. And uh, he was actually on the ground. He just, I think he just reached up with his hand and tripped him up there. Yeah, Trison was trying. He almost outran his coverage, too. He ran right into the back of his defender and slowed him down a little bit. That was a very, very athletic play by the young man on the ground to get that hand up and get a hold of that ankle. Loss of one on the play. Second and 11 from the 43 for St. Pius. Three receivers to the right. Thornton in the backfield next to Caroli, who's in the shotgun. Caroli's going to take it himself up the middle, following his blockers to the 45 to the 50s. Then move up to the Crystal City 47-yard line. A good run by Mickey Caroli. Going to be just shy of the first down, though, I believe. That's his first run of the night. That was a designed play. He picks up about 9 or 10 on that play. And you know, he's a, he's a guy that will run it. He, he had, Coming into this game, 51 carries for 333 yards and 7 touchdowns. See what I did there? See what I did there? That's great. That's funny stuff. Funny, funny stuff. Third and two to go for Crystal City. See me for St. Pius throwing out to Hennessy in the flat at the 50. Cuts to the left side, picks up the first down and more down the sideline to the 35. Pushed out of bounds. A great move by Hennessy. We're going to get a late flag on the play by the far line judge out there. That could be for a legal hit, might be for a face mask. I think we might have a late hit, an unsportsmanlike there. 33-yard line, flag down on the play. 2.55 remaining in the first half. 11 and nothing is the lead for St. Pius. 11-0 the lead for St. Pius. 2.55 remaining in this first half. St. Pius with the ball 
Going to be a dead ball penalty personal foul personal against foul Crystal City. City. So that's going to be 15 extra yards for St. Pius. This has been a very penalty heavy game so far. Yes it has but what's really been impressive about this game is the way that these young men on both sides of the ball are doing a great job of running after the catch. Valley Catholic leads Herculaneum 20 to nothing. Folks here are very, very interested in that score. Valley Catholic and St. Pius are both tied for the lead in conference play. Both teams are 4-0 in the I-55 conference. And they will play next week. So if both win tonight, that will make a we're very interesting and exciting matchup next week, and we'll have that for you on KJFF. Oh, and absolutely. And when they go down to Valley and St. Genevieve, that town will be ready for a football game on Friday night. First and 10. St. Pius from the Crystal City. Uh, call it the 17 yard line. Three receivers to the right. Caroli in the shotgun. Thornton to his right. Caroli going to take it himself up the middle, following his blocker inside the 10. And it's going to be just shy of the first down, though. But another good run by Mickey Caroli. Did a very nice job on that play of following his blockers and finding that seam and then getting those shoulders pointed forward. 2.36 and counting remaining here in the first half. Plenty of time for St. Pius with the ball at the Crystal City 10-yard line. Second and two remaining. Need to get to the eight at the 10-yard line. Caroli in the shotgun again, takes the snap, hands it off to Thornton, running left side into the end zone, touchdown. Huge hole for Trison Thornton, and an easy touchdown carry there. Thornton punches it in from 10 yards out with 2.17 remaining in the game, and St. Pius adds to their lead. Trison got around that left tackle, saw a seam, and went. There was no stopping him. He didn't even get touched going in the end zone on that one. 2.17 remaining in the first half, and we'll see what St. Pius is going to do. Now their kicker is Withrow, and he is not out there lined up. Last time they, they went for two on a fake pass, so now they have Ben Linderer out there to kick the extra point for St. Pius. They currently lead 17 to nothing. Linderer on to kick the extra point. The snap is down. The kick is up, and it is good. Another good kick for St. Pius, and they go up 18 to nothing. We'll take a minute, we'll make, take a minute time out. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The Bank of Bloomstell offers fixed rate home loans that are actually serviced in our area. As well as being locally serviced, their rates are very competitive. Stop by one of their local offices to discuss your loan request with an experienced lender. No more letters telling you to send your payments out of state. The Bank of Bloomsdale with locations in Bloomsdale, Crystal City, St. Genevieve, and inside the Country Mart in St. Genevieve. Locally owned, big enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. We have a score update for you. Hillsborough leads Lutheran South 28 to nothing. We are here at St. Pius 20, excuse me, 18 to nothing is the score here. 217 remaining in the first half. The kick is away from Withrow, and that is going to go into the end zone. So another touchback for Withrow. He is perfect on the kickoff for the touchbacks. He even acts like a professional kicker. Kicks the ball and then stands next to the tee. Let those guys go down there and kill each other. I'll be the safety guy. 18 to nothing is the lead for St. Pius. Crystal City gets the ball back. 2-12 remaining here in the first half. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. We want to thank our sponsors for making this game possible. Mercy Hospital Jefferson, the Bank of Bloomsdale in Crystal City, and F.W. Harder Plumbing in Crystal City. 2-12 remaining in the ball game. Excuse me, in the first half, excuse me. Crystal City with the ball at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Five defensive backs out for St. Pius. Two linebackers, two down linemen, and then two men standing up. Only two oh! down. Ball gets away. It's on the ground. Hibbets jumps on it. So a fumble and a late flag coming out from the head referee back there. Hibbets jumped on the fumble. He fumbled the snap. He was in the shotgun. That's probably going to be just on a late hit for St. Pius. Personal foul on St. Pius. That's just going to be a late hit for uh, piling on there. So a 15-yard penalty for St. Pius. That fumble was probably caused just by the formation because St. Pius was showing about six or seven on the rush. They were coming after him on that play. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. 15 yards from the spot. It would have been a loss of about eight on the play. 
first and six. They'll put the ball at the 24-yard line, so that'll be second down and six to go for Crystal City. 2.06 and counting here in the first half. 18 to nothing the lead for St. Pius. Two to the left, two to the right. They don't, they're showing some, Pius showing blitz. And he's sacked. Number 54 for St. Pius. Jesse Eimer came completely unblocked off the near edge, and he just brought him down. I mean, unblocked. They tried to get a chop block on him, and he just jumped right over it, blew through there, and put a textbook tackle and sack on the quarterback on that one. So a big sack there by St. Pius. It backs Crystal City up. That's going to be a loss of about 10 yards on the play. And that'll bring up third and about 14 to go. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Prater standing behind Hibbets in the pistol. They bring the pressure again up the middle. Unblocked, gets it out to Saudi in the flat, cuts out to the sideline. Cuts back to the middle at the 25, still going, and now he has hit. Boy, Saudi just refuses to go down. It's, we've been watching that all night. The receiver, Saudi's been the real leader of that whole pack, but these receivers are doing an excellent job of running after the catch tonight. Both sides of the ball, especially Saudi. And you know what, that was the perfect play call for Crystal City because St. Pius had pressure coming up the middle, unblocked again, and Hibbets would have been brought down if he had not gotten the ball out that quick. Oh, absolutely. Pius has really stepped it up. They're, they're rushing five or six. They're sending five or six at the young quarterback on every play here lately. That'll bring up fourth down, and Crystal City will bring out the punt team, punting from their own 26, 27-yard line. Hennessy and Thornton back to receive the kick for Pius. The kick is away. It's a low and it will bounce in Crystal City territory. Thornton's gonna pick it up at his own 50. He's gonna cut to the left side and he'll pick up about seven yards on the play. And so the dangerous play for Trison Thornton, he picks it up and he'll get a return of about seven on the play and St. Pius will get the drive started in the Crystal City territory with 55 seconds left. Fielding a punt after two bounces like that will definitely give a coach gray hair very quickly. And it wasn't like he, he caught it with two hands in his chest. He stuck one arm out there and uh, grabbed it. That's very dangerous. Oh, absolutely. And two players staring right at him when he did it. And now Crystal City, excuse me, St. Pius, I think they're going to lose yardage here. Illegal procedure on, on St. Pius. Is that four now for them? I have right now unofficially 55 yards in penalties for St. Pius and 50 for Crystal City for 105 total yards in penalties. That's at least the fourth uh, legal procedure penalty. That is their fourth illegal procedure. Man. And yet they lead it 18 to nothing with 54.5 seconds left here in the first half. Caroli throws it out to the flat. Up the sideline, that is to that is to DeAndre Riney. He takes it up the sideline. He's going to be short of the first down, but a nice play. Picked up about seven or eight on that play. It was a nice job on that one. Riney tackled out of bounds by number 35. It was a quick hit, kind of an out play to the left. Second and eight coming up for St. Pius. Spread formation, empty backfield. Caroli in the shotgun. Throw it out to Riney again, and the flat breaks the tackle. Picks up the first down and more. Drags the tackler for three yards, and he picks up the first down. What a catch and yard after the catch by DeAndre Riley. And we have a very late flag now. Somebody said something. Another very late flag. Well, this is, you know, this is a rivalry game. Very heated, 44.1 seconds left in the first half. 18 to nothing is the lead for St. Pius on top of Crystal City here at St. Pius High School. On top of yourself personal alongside foul. Crystal City, it's gonna be a personal foul against St. Pius. So that's gonna cost them 15 yards. And that adds to the yardage total for penalties. That's exactly what you don't want to do after a really good play. They came back, they ran that play twice, a very good run after the catch, that quick hit to the outside. Somebody came up and said something to one of the opponents or one of the officials, and it just shoots yourselves in the foot. It'll drive a coach nuts when you do things like that because they're trying to put a few more points on the board before halftime. 44.1 seconds left in the first half. St. Pius leads it 18 to nothing. Pius with the ball at the Crystal City 39 yard line. And it will be first down. 
Unsportsmanlike conduct is the penalty against Crystal City. First down and 10 yards to go for Crystal City. Or excuse me, St. Pius. They did pick up the first down, but they lost 15 on the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Spread formation here. Three to the right, two to the left. Caroli in the shotgun with an empty backfield. Takes the snap. He's going to run it himself up the middle with follows his blockers to the 30. Brought down from behind. Another good run by Mickey Crowley. He's not very fast, but he's very patient, and he they pick great times to just get, give it to him. They absolutely do. They've disguised it well. He's run the ball three times, and they've picked it, and we have another late flag. After another good run, we'll have to see which way this is going, and Crystal City is pointing over at St. Pius that it's going against them. Well, it has been a penalty. Boy, this, you know, that first quarter just flew by, but this second quarter has really come to a halt. But part of that is because we get a flag on every other play, it seems like. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Like conduct on St. Pius again. Whew. Another 15-yarder. Boy, and, Saint, and the uh, St. Pius fans are starting to get a little antsy and angry about it. After a good 12-yard run by the quarterback to pick up a first down, put him within field goal range, and possibly put some more points on the board. Shoot themselves in the foot again. And so, referees will mark off 15 yards from the end of the run. Another 15 yard penalty for St. Pius. What's the total up to now here? We are at. Illegal shift against St. Pius. Oh, it was also an illegal. There were two penalties on the play, so they are marching them way back. 85 plus the, they're 95 yards on their own now. Conduct on on St. Pius. Boy, they are not, they are now back in their own territory at their own 41 yard line. Two plays in a row that were very unusual. It is a first down, and they went backwards 15 yards. And then they get another first down, and it backs them up another 25 yards. I think this is a good idea. St. Pius is going to call a timeout, a timeout that they really need. St. Pius will call a timeout. We'll take it as well. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Think you're ready for retirement? Get answers on topics like Social Security, the rising cost of health care, investing for retirement income, and 401k rollover options. The Festus Crystal City branch of Wells Fargo Advisors is hosting a workshop on Saturday, October 26th. If you plan to retire soon, this is for you. Enjoy complimentary lunch and hear secret service tips on protecting yourself from identity theft. For reservations, call 636-931-1900 for details. Retire like you mean it. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Everyone's talking about junk in the trunk flea market on Highway 67, south of Festus. The Pumpkin Patch and the Shriners Train with Frowny the Clown now open every weekend in October. Plus, stop by and see the Drunk in the Trunk Mobile, too, and get your picture taken. The kids will love it. Vendor space is just $15. Call Junk in the Trunk Flea Market at 636-209-3811. That's 209-3811 for Junk in the Trunk Flea Market, Highway 67, south of Festus. KJFF Festus Crystal City Imperial DeSoto. St. Pius is looking at a first and 30 situation, making about a first and 27. Ball in their own territory. There's a flag on the play. Going to throw it deep, looking for Hennessy, and it's incomplete out of his reach. And we get another penalty flag on the far side of the field. Head referee is talking to the uh, side judge on the far side. It is an illegal shift on St. Pius. We've seen that before, too. From that same side again. St. Pius has gone backwards to the tune of about 65 yards on this drive. 31.8 seconds left in the first half. 18 to nothing is the lead for St. Pius. This second second quarter has slowed down to a crawl. We've gotten a flag on, I think, at least the last four plays. And St. Pius is absolutely going backwards. They have the ball at their own 36-yard line. It is still first down. Ball at their own 36. They need to get to the Crystal City 30. So do your own math. Caroli under center. Wing T formation. Handed off to Irvin on the left side. 
Actually, that wasn't Irvin. That was that was Filer. Excuse me. Good fake there by Caroli. Filer up the middle. He picks up about eight on the play, but it's still second and very long. Pius with the ball at the Crystal City 42. Need to get to the excuse me. Pius with the ball at their own 42, and they need to get to the Crystal City 30. And I think that's going to do it for this first half. Both teams are walking off the field, so they are just going to let it run down. That is going to do it for the first half. 18 to nothing is the lead for St. Pius on top of Crystal City. We will take a break and come back here and run down that first half. We'll be back in two minutes. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Second half here at St. Pius High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. 18 to nothing is the lead for Crystal City here as we start the second half. Both teams are back out on the field. They have taken their second half warm-ups and they are ready to go. And you know, Eric, this is actually really, this is really one of the first, not not cold, but cool weather games we've had this season. So, you know, there's a little bit of adjustment that needs to be made there because up until last week, it was pretty warm, going even in the second half. Oh, absolutely. We're wearing short sleeve to football. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have the coat on and the hot absolutely. chocolate and the coffee. It's supposed to be cold out, pushing pushing borderline snow. That's football weather on a grass field. That's exactly what I was saying on Sports Talk today. That is the way that football was intended to be played, not hot. Soldier field, outdoor, uh, Packers Stadium, on grass. Freezing cold. The way God intended it to be played. Exactly. And we're on grass here. so it's Exactly. Even Crystal City will kick it off first. St. Pius will receive. St. Pius moving from right to left. Crystal City kicking left to right. A little in indecision on who was going to field it. Hennessy picks it up. Up to the 30 he is hit, and that is where he will. You see how ball comes loose. Ball pops loose. Crystal City has it. I think the ball popped loose again. Crystal City has the football in St. In Pius territory. We've got a flag down on the play. It, a lot of lot going on in that play there. Tristan Thornton and Isaiah Hennessy in position on between the two on who was going to field it. Hennessy finally picked it up. Ball popped loose. Crystal City fielded it. There is a flag down on the play, so referees are going to sort it out, and we'll have to figure it out once they get it figured out. Once we see what the penalty is, this could be the kind of thing that Crystal City really needed to spark them to get things moving. A good turnover and get them started on the 30-yard line. We'll see how this works out for them. The penalty is going to be against St. Pius. It's going to be a face mask penalty on the St. Pius Lancers. Or is it against Crystal? Oh, that is against Crystal. I forgot they're going the wrong way. They're going the other way now. So it's going to be against Crystal City. Was the penalty before the fumble? Well, or you know, actually, I, I realized after I said that, Crystal City did pick the fumble up anyway, so they will retain possession of the ball. Crystal City fumble, they did get it back, though, but where? They have the chain set for St. Pius. It's going to be a face mask on Crystal City, and now St. Pius is going into the huddle, so it looks like St. They must have gotten the ball back in that pile up. So St. Pius did get the ball back. Well, oh, we yeah, started the second half the way we ended the first half with a fumble and a penalty. All right. So St. Pius will start it off first and 10 from their own 46-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Caroli in the pistol. New formation here for St. Pius. Thornton behind him, hands it off to Thornton up the middle, and he's going to maybe gain one. He went straight to the ground as soon as he hit through that hole. He got maybe a yard on the play. Crystal had straight ahead blocking on that when a linebacker came flying through to, to plug the gap. Very nice defensive call there to shut that one down. St. Pius really mixes up their formations a lot. Never know what they're going to throw out there. You usually see that on the defensive side of the ball. Second and nine, Lancers. Send a man in motion. Caroli takes a shotgun, hands it off to the man in motion. It tripped up at the 50, continues to move up to the 41-yard line. Good run there for St. Pius by number 22, Lance Irvin. Irvin on the end around, picks up the first down a little bit more into Crystal City territory at the Hornet 41. Just as he got turned around the corner, a player went for his feet. He hopped right over the top of him. That allowed him to pick up another seven or eight yards. He was carrying the ball a little loose, but he tucked it into the last minute when two players went to bring him down. 
St. Pius with the ball at the Crystal City 41. Pius leads it 18 to nothing. A minute and 10 seconds here into the third quarter. They send a man in motion, that's Isaiah Hennessy, and they hand it off to him on the end around with room to run at the 40, cuts to the outside, tripped up to the 35, extended his body, dove for the uh, extra yardage there, and he picks up five yards on the play. That was a lot of running, and unfortunately, by the time he got all the way out to that right side, the wideout just could not maintain that block any longer. He separated and made him, and took away that edge from him. Gain of six on the play, second and four for St. Pius. Need to get to the Crystal 31. Pius in the huddle. Pius sitting back, it's Crystal City sitting back in their defense. Looks like they've got three linemen, four linebackers, and four defensive backs. Four wide receivers out for St. Pius. Caroli in the shotgun. Going to throw it off the flat, and it's intercepted by Crystal City. They're going to take it the other way. Caroli, the last man to bid him. He won't get there at the 10-5 the touchdown on the interception return by Drake Childers. No flags on the play. Crystal City gets on the board with a defensive touchdown. 9.49 left here in the third quarter. He did a good job of stepping to the outside. I don't think that Mickey Caroli ever saw him. He jumped up at the last second and tipped that ball right down to himself and picked it up. The big man showing he had some feet getting down that field for about a 65-yard interception return. 65-yard interception return for Crystal City. That is by Drake Childers. So Crystal City gets on the board here. Early on in the third quarter, 9.49 left down at the west end zone. It looks like they are gonna go ahead and go for two, two, three receivers to the right side, one to the left, looking to throw it, looking oh. to throw it. He's hit as he throws it, and it's diving incomplete. No catch on the play for Crystal City, so the two-point conversion is missed. But they do get on the board with an interception return for a touchdown. 18 to six is the lead for St. Pius. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to High School Football on KJF and KJF Web TV. The Medicine Shop, with locations in Festus and Peebley, is committed to providing the residents of Jefferson County with much more than just prescription refills, like free local delivery, automatic refills and reminders, diabetic and medical equipment, and the personal service that you deserve, just to name a few. That's the Medicine Shop Pharmacies, across from the post office in Festus and on Commercial Boulevard in Peebley, caring beyond prescription. The doctor is in. Board certified in orthopedic surgery, Dr. William Kennan is now a part of Mercy Clinic. As part of the Mercy Clinic, Dr. Kennan belongs to a healthcare team that is thousand strong, linking you to experts everywhere you find Mercy. It is coordinated, responsive care that is all about you. For more information or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Kennan, call 636-933-8050. Learn more about Mercy at mercy.net. Isaiah Hennessy returns the Crystal City kickoff up to the St. Pius 37-yard line, and that is where St. Pius will begin after the interception return for a touchdown by Crystal City. Put them on the board. 18-6 is the lead for the Lancers. 9.39 remaining here in the third quarter. Crystal City has to run out and get the tee. So a official timeout here. Now they'll get it back off. Crystal City looked like they caught a break on that opening kickoff, but they finally caught the break they needed to get some points on the board. Caroli under center, three men in the backfield. They hand it off up the middle to Filer, dives forward, he'll pick up three yards to the 40. That's a nice little momentum shift there for Crystal. That's exactly what they needed, because they, you know, haven't, I mean, their offense had been moving the ball, but just couldn't quite extend a drive, and so a little bit of momentum shift there and get a defensive touchdown. Absolutely, they just needed that little pick-me-up, that little extra spark, and maybe that'll give it to them. Only problem with that is it gives St. Pius the ball back, and we've seen how they can hold on to the ball for a very long time. Yeah, it could be the fourth quarter before they see it again offensively. Caroli hands it off to Irvin, running right side. He won't get much. Maybe a three-yard gain on the play with nine minutes left in the third quarter. Pius has come out. gain of two on the play, up to the 42. Pius has come out here in the second half. And they're really trying to pound that ball up the middle now. They've changed their tactics. They've gone away from the spread offense. They're packing it back in on that wing T run offense now, and they're looking to run the ball between the tackles. It is third down and five to go for St. Pius. Need to get to the need to get to their own 47. 
Three men in the backfield, one receiver to the right. Caroli handing it off up the middle. Good run and good carry. I believe that's Irvin. Irvin with the carry. Going to be close to the first down. We'll see where they spot it. And I think they're spotting it a little bit shy. So they're going to need about fourth and short. Fourth and maybe two feet for St. Pius. Three consecutive runs right up the middle, right between the tackles. This is where you watch out for that quarterback sneak, the way that Mickey Crowley, you know, Crowley is a, not a huge guy, but he's pretty, very good size. He's gonna go under center here. If I were Crystal City, I'd watch the quarterback sneak right up the gut. He is going to run, take it himself, run the option, flips it out to Thornton, and it's on the ground, but Thornton jumps on top of it. No, oh, no, Crystal, well, they, it doesn't matter if the fumble was good. Crystal City, it was on a fourth down. So Crystal City will get the ball. I do think Thornton recovered that, but that was a fourth down. Interesting play call on fourth and short. Well, there was a miscue that on the outside because the uh, wide out of the tight end actually went out there and blocked his read on the option play, which that'll mess you up really bad when you don't have that read because he has to come to the quarterback or go after the receiver. That's how you determine what you're going to do in that play. So Crystal City will get the ball after, after the turnover on downs by St. Pius at the St. Pius 41-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Brent Hibbets in the pistol with Keon Prater standing right behind him. Pius showing blitz. They bring the heat, and a flag is out before the snap. False start on Crystal City, so that's going to back them up five yards. That was probably a very fortunate penalty that somebody jumped on Crystal City because they had a bad snap come back. That ball was loose, and St. Pius was sending six on the rush that time. They were coming after it. That was a fortunate penalty. It's going to be first and 15 for the Hornets. That'll bring up first and 15 for Crystal City. Bring, backs the ball up to the Hornet 46, excuse me, the St. Pius 46-yard line. Three receivers out to the right side, one to the left. Hibbets. In the pistol formation with Keon Prater, Prater standing right behind him. And it looks like St. Pius is going to bring the pressure again. Looks like they're at least bringing four. They're bringing six. They're going to get rid of it. No, he won't. He is sacked. Another sack for Hibbets. And a flag comes out on the play as the sack is going down. So Hibbets is dropped for a loss of nine. And we'll have to see what the penalty is all about. That's what's going to be less than that. Loss of five. Personal foul, face masks Personal on St. Pius. They had five guys get to the quarterback at one time on there. I guess they just ran out of things to hit on the young man. So it would have been a loss of five on the sack for Crystal City, but the St. Pius penal, uh, face mask penalty is gonna give them 15 extra yards, so they, were gonna, they will mark that off. They're still gonna be shy of a first down. And that will, they'll mark it up to the St. Pius 36 yard line, and it will be second and five. Unfortunately, we were already at 35 yards in total penalties again, so some of the corrections weren't quite made that I'm sure the coaches were looking for at halftime. 18 to six is the lead for St. Pius. Here with 7.29 and counting in the third quarter. First down and five to go for Crystal City. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Hibbets in the pistol, Prater behind him. And he off to Prater, and he is hit in the backfield. The ball comes loose, and St. Pius returns it the other direction. Number 42 for St. Pius, Mike Cords. Somehow got the ball. I don't know if he just stripped it. And he returned it back the other way, so a turnover for Crystal City. Somebody came flying through really low and hit Prey right in the ankles as he cut as they handed him that ball and he went flying and so did the ball. So by Pius gets the turnover. The takeaway there. That's exactly what Crystal City didn't need. Down 18 to six with 7.14 left in the third quarter. They really, they still don't have an offensive touchdown. No, they don't. And so far they don't even have a play on offense yet that we can record as a stat. You know, they did pick up a little momentum there with the interception and things were really looking good for Crystal at that moment. Then they rack up about another five yard penalty and then the fumble. The, the mistakes have continued here, and that's where they're hurting themselves really bad in this game. In the bottom of the third in St. Louis. First and 10, St. Pius, they get the ball at their own 44-yard line. First and 10, St. Pius from their own 44-yard line. They'll send one receiver out wide to the left side, three men in the backfield, Caroli under center. 
St. Pius with the ball at their own 44. Caroli handed off to Lance Irvin, running right side to sweep. He's going to be brought down. Nice. A nice job by number 56 for Crystal City. Cody Sprague ran him down from behind. It was a great job on the defense here because Crystal City actually moved their four down lineman in tighter to try to take away that middle run that St. Pius has shown they want to do. He got through the block, shed off his guy, and went and took him down from behind. Second and 10, St. Pius from their own 44. Same formation here. Ball on the right hash. Caroli gonna take it himself, gonna throw it over the middle, and it's incomplete, and a pass interference gonna be called on Crystal City. Isaiah Hennessy was open over the middle, but Crystal City, number 32, Donovan Williams, got a hand up there and knocked it down, but I think he got a little bit of the body too a little early. I was trying to get a look at that because he had stuttered wide open going down the right side. That was, he got there about two steps too early on that on the defense on Hennessy to knock him down, put those arms on him. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be about another 15-yard penalty. And so that will be, they will mark that off. Pass interference is the call on Crystal City. That will move the ball into Crystal City territory at the Hornet 41-yard line. And first down Lancers. St. Pius get, picks up the first down on the penalty. First and 10 from the Hornet, 41. Pius leads at 18 to six, 6.34 left in the third quarter. Caroli under center, receiver to the right side, and we get an illegal procedure. That right tackle on the far side over there started just a little bit early. How many times have we seen this tonight? That would be their fifth cool. illegal procedure penalty tonight. First and 15. But it's their first at this half. Lots of penalties for St. Pius, but they lead it by 12. 6.33 left. That last pass play we saw, don't be surprised if we see that one again because they had stuttered on the right side, wide open flying down there. Mickey Carley just didn't see him on that play. We'll probably see that play again. First and 15, Pius from their Crystal City 45. Caroli under center. Receiver to the right side, three men in the backfield. Hard count by Caroli. Crystal City jumped a little bit, but they did stay on their side of the field. The side of the line of scrimmage. I think we're going to get a timeout called by St. Pius. St. Pius calls the timeout. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi, this is Matt Carpenter for Twin City Toyota in Herculaney. And if you're looking for a great deal on your next vehicle, don't think twice. Think Twin City. Right now at Twin City, save on a new Toyota Corolla or RAV4. Take your pick of these hot new models and get 1.9% APR financing. Plus, during October, get an additional $500 Toyota cash on new Corollas at Twin City Toyota. Just off I-55 in Herculaneum or online at TwinCityToyota.com. Don't think twice. Think you're ready for retirement? Get answers on topics like Social Security, the rising cost of health care, investing for retirement income, and 401k rollover options. The Festus Crystal City branch of Wells Fargo Advisors is hosting a workshop on Saturday, October 26th. If you plan to retire soon, this is for you. Enjoy complimentary lunch and hear secret service tips on protecting yourself from identity theft. For reservations, call 636-931-1900 for details. Retire like you mean it. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. 6.33 remaining in the third quarter. 18-6 is the lead for St. Pius. They have the ball at the Crystal City 45-yard line. Receiver to the left side, Caroli under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Irvin, running right side, room to run, tripped up at the 40. Good run there by Lance Irvin. Five-yard pickup for Irvin. Did a good job of being patient, getting up behind that big right guard, letting him get that block so he could get into the secondary and have the linebacker take him on one-on-one. -on -one. Call it again at six on the play up to the 40-yard line. Check that, second and Make nine. it 30, six. make it to the 39, second down, and nine to go. Pius taking all kinds of time. You, you don't see big, long extended huddles like this as much. At least we haven't this year, but Pius takes a lot of time in the huddle. They have not been called for delay of game yet, and they're taking time off the clock, 5.56 and counting here in the third quarter. Pius with the 12-point lead. Caroli under center. Got to take it himself, running left side, and he won't get much. Nice fake, but Crystal City sniffed it out. Picking up about three on that play. 
they did a good job of keeping an eye on Carley on that play. They didn't bite on the face. They stayed with their assignments and did a good job of getting Carley on the ground to make it a long third down play here. Well, and in that situation, Caroli ran exactly where the fake was. So it doesn't didn't seem like that does a lot of good to fake it and then take it exactly where you you faked it. Just He's supposed to actually either take it to the outside or back up to the inside, but Crystal's defense did a good job of pushing straight forward and staying in their lanes. He really didn't have any place other to go than that. Third and seven flips it out to Irvin on the right side, following Fowler out there on the block to the edge. Yeah. Near the first down, I think he got it. Pushed out of bounds, did Irvin at the 30-yard line. And it looks like he's going to pick it up. Tyler got to the outside on that play and got that good block in. The last second dive on that play got him that. Oh, it looks like he might have stepped out yeah, of bounds. Yeah, I think he's going to be he's going to be short there. Oh, the play looked good there for a while, but it is short. This goes to Lance Irvin on the last play. So he picked up about four or five on that play. Another good job by the defense of Crystal, shutting down those edges and not giving him any room to work. Fourth down and two to go here for St. Pius. Well, last time they went for it on fourth down, they gave it over on down. Alex, where are you going? What Alex, they need to do, down. fourth down and two to go. Caroli hands it off up the middle with room to run. It's got the 10. He's going to be dragged down and pushed out of bounds. That is number four on the carry, DeAndre Riney, with a nice carry for St. Pius. 30 yards on the carry. Came through the middle, there was a seam there. I think Crystal City had a different defense call. They were looking for something else, and there was a big gap. The safety was pinched in, and he took off down the sideline, just short of punching it in for six. Chaffee leads Jefferson R7, 40 to 14. Quick score update for you. Picks up the first down, and there is an injured St. Pius player on the far sideline. He is off the field. Is that Riney over there? I think that was Riney. I think the uh, tackle, I think he might have rolled up his ankle or something or a knee when he got taken down on that play. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to make a correction from an earlier score. DeAndre Wrighty the is the man down Jefferson on the far sideline. He is he is 40. off the field. Jefferson he will limp away from the sideline. So first and goal, St. Pius here from the Crystal City That's four yard line. 18 to six is the lead for St. Pius with 436 remaining in the third quarter. That Jefferson Chaffee score is important to St. Pius too because they're in the same district as St. Pius. If that score holds, St. Pius would actually move up in the district to number four. And well, Chaffee is a very good team. Chaffee is traditionally a very good team. Caroli hands it off to Filer on the right side. It's gonna be close, no signal yet. And I think he's gonna be just shy of the touchdown is Chris Filer. Just Chris had to kind of hopscotch through on that play because there's just people laying all over the ground going after his ankles. He just had to bounce over the top of all those players to pick up those three yards. Ball at the one-yard line, second and goal for Pius at the one-yard line. I say this is here, you just give it to your big-bodied Filer. Well, now they've got an extra offensive guard in the backfield. Now Filer's going to be stopped short. Great job by the Crystal City defense getting through their credit Cody Sprague with the tackle for loss. That's gonna back him up a yard, and that will be third and goal from the two. Pius went to the old Bears when they had the fridge playing for him. They put their big man in at six foot eight at fullback and tried to run up behind him. Crystal just ducked down and let him pass by and then stepped in and took that seam away. That was the old fridge play. Except they didn't hand it to him. Like yeah, that's true. The fridge. Third and goal here for St. Pius from the two. Trying to punch it in from two years right Now they keep it to Caroli. In, I think he's going to be in. Pushes the pile. Still no signal yet. And there it is. Touchdown, Mickey Caroli. He runs it in from two yards out. That is his eighth touchdown on the season. And that comes with 3.23 left here in the third quarter. St. Pius put about a seven-minute drive together there. Did a good job. They only had the one penalty where they jumped off sides with one illegal procedure. So they did cut down on their penalties a little bit in the second half. Took them three plays to punch it in from that three yards out, but they finally got it there. 24 to six is the score now. They have that unusual offset to the left kicking play. That really threw Crystal off on the last one, the last time they did that on the blocking scheme. Ben Linderer on to attempt the extra point for St. Pius. Low snap, the hold is good, the kick is up, and the kick is good. St. Pius goes up 25-6 with 3.23 remaining 
in the third quarter. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The doctor is in. Board certified in neurology, Dr. Tariq Alam is now part of Mercy Clinic. As part of the Mercy Clinic, Dr. Alam belongs to a healthcare team that is thousands strong, linking you to experts everywhere you find Mercy. It's coordinated, responsive care that's all about you. For more information or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Alam, call 636-933-8270. Learn more about Mercy or find a Mercy Clinic physician at mercy.net. Hi, this is Matt Carpenter for Twin City Toyota in Herculaney. And if you're looking for a great deal on your next vehicle, don't think twice, think Twin City. Right now at Twin City, save on a new Toyota Corolla or RAV4. Take your pick of these hot new models and get 1.9% APR financing. Plus, during October, get an additional $500 Toyota cash on new Corollas at Twin City Toyota. Just off I-55 in Herculaneum or online at TwinCityToyota.com. Don't think twice. Short kickoff by St. Pius here. It's fielded at the 20. Crystal City will field it, and St. Pius will swarm. And that is where St. Crystal City will take over this drive deep in their own territory at about their own 24-yard line. A score update there for you from Herculaneum High School. Valley Catholic leads Herculaneum 47 to nothing. So it looks like, should St. Pius go on to Lewis and win, meet, win this game, if Fort Valley Catholic leading 47 to nothing, you'd think that they will win that game. They will remain undefeated in conference play, you would think. And they will meet St. Pius next week for what could be the conference championship game. Oh, absolutely. That was the shortest kick we've had from St. Pius. He only put that one to the 20. That last field goal, he put it right through the outflash. And since we're at Father Dalton Stadium, I guess he just bounced it right off of Father Dalton's car. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did have, we have not mentioned that for you. This is Father Dalton Stadium here at St. Pius High School. They have a tendency to name stadiums after people. We'll, we'll give you that here and say There's an incomplete pass. Looking, uh, Crystal City was looking down this seam. Hibbets was looking for a receiver. That was very nice coverage. They had double coverage on that play. The young quarterback from Crystal City, he did a good job, Hibbett, of putting that ball right on his receiver's hands and did not give either one of the defensive backs a real legitimate play on that. And we have a flag. We have a flag down on the line of scrimmage, and Crystal City is going backwards. He's marking off 10 yards on the play, so you'd think that would be a holding, and it will be a hold on Crystal City. Another penalty. We've talked, we've talked a lot about St. Pius having a lot of penalties, but Crystal City has had probably more. But I think we've talked more about St. Pius because it's hurt them a little bit more. Oh, absolutely. But in the first half, you're right, Pius had tremendously more penalties. I think he had 115 yards in the first half. This, this second half, we're seeing the exact opposite of that. Crystal City is already at 45 yards in penalties, where Pius is only at 20. So they've just kind of switched places, even though we're still racking up the penalties. First down and 20 to go here for Crystal City. Ball at their own 15-yard line. Hibbets in the pistol formation. Dropping back, looking left. Going to throw it deep. Hit as he throws it, and it is going to be incomplete. And Hibbets, give credit for him to getting rid of it, but he took a shot. He was looking for Saudi downfield. He threw it a little long, but Hibbets took a shot as he was hit. Oh, he did that weak side linebacker, came through on a delayed, delayed blitz, wasn't touched. He split right between the guard and the tackle, and he got tagged just as he was trying to release that ball. He's lucky. When you throw a ball up and it hangs up in the air that long, you're very lucky if it doesn't get picked off. Well, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think he threw it so far, he actually overthrew everybody. He threw over. He threw it overthrew his uh, intended target and he overthrew the defense too. That'll bring up second and 24 Crystal City. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hibbets hands it off to, no he's gonna take, hands it off to Andrew Saudi, and he is met immediately and he is gonna be pushed backwards. They attempted the end around on the, with Saudi, the wide receiver in motion. And he's gonna lose five yards on the play. That'll bring up second and 25. St. Pius started out at the beginning of the game with only three down linemen. They would occasionally send a fourth or a fifth on the rush. They have really stepped it up in the second half. They have no problem with sending five or six. They have a lot of confidence in their cornerbacks and their safeties to be able to cover Crystal's receivers because they're just sending the, they're sending the bus on every play defensively here lately. Second and 25 for Crystal City from their own 10-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Three linebackers out for St. Pius. Hibbets looking left and it's gonna be overthrown. He was looking for, he was looking uh, for Dan Pulliam 
incomplete, and there's a flag on the play. He had to throw that ball high. The big man, the six foot four player from the defensive tackle slot, was bearing right down on him, right where he wanted to throw the ball. That may be the play. It may be a roughing the passer call, is what it may be. Third down and 25. They are. The referee is facing towards St. Pius, which looks like he's going to benefit Saint or Crystal City. And it looks like it's going to be a roughing the passer play on St. Pius. So another. St. Pius, not only have they had penalties, but they've had some big 15 yard penalties. That's a roughing the passer penalty there. Oh, absolutely. They would have had Crystal City in a third and 25 situation. Instead, now they're in a third and 10. If nothing else, this is going to give Crystal, even if they don't get the first down, oh, it is first down. Automatic first down on a roughing the passer? Yeah, they definitely hurt themselves there from third and 25 to first and 10. Yeah, what would have been a third down and 25 turns into a first and 10 in Crystal City after the roughing the passer penalty by St. Pius. Pius leads it 25 to 6 with 2.30 remaining in the third quarter. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Hibbets in the pistol formation. They send Saudi in motion going to the far sideline. High snap, Hibbets dropping back. And he's running and he's going backwards and he gets rid of it. It's going to be incomplete. And... I, no intentional grounding. I guess there was a receiver in the area. And now they're going to throw a late flag. Now the side judge is going to come in and throw a flag as he comes running in. I think they're going to call this an intentional grounding because the player that was close to it was not an eligible receiver. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just a freshman mistake there. You just got to tuck that ball down and just try to minimize the amount of the yards you lose on that play. He's just trying to save the team and do a good job for them. They're talking to the and pious players. The, uh, the rain is coming down here at St. Pius High School. Coming down lightly. They're backing. Oh, they're going back to the original line of scrimmage. I thought they were backing St. Pius up there for a minute on that one. Five yard penalty. Intentional grounding on Crystal City. And there's. Hillsborough, a touchdown and a two-point conversion is no good. So Hillsborough leads Lutheran South 54-28. That sounds like that same high-scoring Hillsborough team we saw last week. Oh, absolutely. Crystal City just hit the 50-yard mark in penalties, unfortunately, for the second half. Second and 15, Hornets from their own 20-yard line. Snap is back. Flip it out to Prater, and he's going to get hit in the backfield, and he's going to be brought down. A loss of five for Prater. And the Crystal City defensive line is really having a hard time blocking these, this uh, St. Pius front three. St. Pius is just mixing it up really well. They're sending four, five, six guys on every play. Crystal City's just having a hard time trying to figure out where they're coming from and who's coming on each and every play because they're mixing it up so well. Festus leads St. Charles West 24 to 21 at the end of the third quarter. Third down and 20 to go for Crystal City. They've been down at this end of the field a long time. A minute 50 and counting here in the third quarter. 25 to 6, the St. Pius lead. If it's dropping back to pass, going to throw it over the middle. It's incomplete, and it's in intercepted by Hennessy through the hands of Saudi. And Hennessy will be brought down at the 31 yard line. A pass intercepted by Isaiah Hennessy. And St. Pius gets the turnover. Hibbett had his favorite target, Saudi, open on that one. He just threw it a little over the top of him, right into the hands of the Pius player who picked it off on a very easy pick. Yeah, just, I mean, he had Snotty pretty open, but he threw it just a little bit high and right through the uh, senior receiver's hands. That high throw like that, that's probably an indication of the last five or six times they've really been in his face trying on the pass plays. They're really putting the pressure on the young man. Yeah, he really has not had a, a clean pass in a while. So Pius goes on offense at the Crystal City 30-yard line. Three receivers to the right. Caroli hands it off to Thornton. Up the middle, he is hit. And he's not going to get anything right at the 30-yard line. No gain on the play for Trice and Thornton. Crystal City stayed with their assignments, clogged up that middle. There was no place to go, and met him hard at the line of scrimmage. They gave him about a foot on that carry. 116 and counting left here in the third quarter. St. Pius, little time left for one, maybe two plays. Yeah, it's really starting to feel like football weather. A little bit of rain, it's getting cooler out. It's letting up though. It was a little bit, it was pretty hard a while ago. It looks like it's letting up. It's still just kind of coming down very lightly. Three receivers to the right side. 
Caroli looking that direction, going to throw it, looking deep for Hennessy, and it is caught in, in the end zone, touchdown! Isaiah Hennessy able to stay on his feet, adjust in the air between two receivers, catches the ball at the one yard line, and backs into the end zone. What a throw, and what a catch on the other end by Isaiah Hennessy. That was beautiful. For your NFL fans, they kind of throw that, that back shoulder throw. He threw it a little bit behind him, right in between the, the safety and the cornerback. Very athletic play by Hennessy to go up, bring that ball down. The two defenders just dropped right around him. He just stepped in one yard for the TD. A great looking pitch and catch there from Caroli to Isaiah Hennessy. Caroli to Isaiah Hennessy with 50 seconds left. Here is Linderer on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up and it is good. And St. Pius goes up 31 to six with 50 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Festus knows how important the right pharmacy can be. From a friendly, helpful staff, knowledgeable pharmacists, to free delivery to a drive-through for your convenience. It's time to look at your choices. Choose the Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Festus, located across from the post office on 116 Walnut in Festus. They always treat you right and they know what you need. Since 1974, Calm Tree has helped people suffering from alcohol and other drug abuse. Calm Tree remains committed to its mission to be an innovative, effective, and responsive community mental health center for Jefferson County. At Calm Tree, they believe in the importance of addressing issues of concern through direct patient care prevention and educational efforts. Professional care is available to you at Calm Tree with adult and adolescent programs, inpatient care, and three outpatient and aftercare locations. Call 931-2700. A five-yard return on the kickoff by Andrew Saudi for Crystal City. He takes it up to the 24-yard line, and that is where Crystal City will start this drive at the her own 24-yard line. We get a final from Herculaneum High School. Valley Catholic wins 47 to seven on top of the Herdy Lake and Black Cats. So a 47 to seven victory for the Herculaneum Black Cats, and the undefeated. Valley Catholic Warriors will await this St. Pius team next week. Well, I'm sure they're listening to this broadcast to see what St. Pius is doing on the way home from their game. First and 10, St. Pius deep in their own territory. Hibbets under pressure, gets rid of it to Prater, and he makes the catch, but he's not going to get much. Just a little dump off. Prater was there waiting for him, and he's actually going to lose a yard on the play. Tip Prater just kind of tipped it to himself. It was able, basically, they, instead of, they lost a yard on the play instead of about six, so. Hibbett has been quite impressive as a freshman. That showed a lot of composure. He had three blue jerseys bearing down on him. He still found Prather and got rid of it. He changed what, what could have been a 10-yard loss into a one-yard loss. Yeah, he, is, he has been uh, under a lot of pressure, and he's been running backwards a lot. St. Pius has really been bringing the load every play this half. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter. We go to the fourth and final quarter here. 35, 32 to 6 is the lead for St. Pius on top of Crystal City. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Back in a minute. The doctor is in. Board certified internal medicine physician Dr. Joanne Waltman is now a part of Mercy Clinic. As a part of the Mercy Clinic, Dr. Waltman belongs to a healthcare team that's thousands strong, linking you to experts everywhere you find Mercy. It's coordinated responsive care that's all about you. For more information or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Waltman, call 636-933-2900. Learn more about Mercy or find a Mercy physician at www.mercy.net. Putting your family first. Hi, this is Calvin Dantley at the Jefferson County Family YMCA. We're looking for teens ages 12 to 17 to be a part of our Teen Leaders Club. that have the opportunity to interact with each other and have fun while discussing topics like goal setting, financial management, community service, and even dating and relationships, just to name a few. Contact me, Calvin Dantley, and find out more about the Teen Leaders Club at your local Jefferson County Family YMCA. 931-9622 or online at www.ymcastlouis.org. Start of the fourth quarter here at Crystal City between St. Pius. We are at St. Pius High School. I'm Tommy Self alongside Eric Overly, the St. Pius cheerleaders, throwing out the T-shirts. The St. Pius fans getting loud and proud, asking for those T-shirts. 
But uh, I think you got to be in one of the first five rows to get one because the uh, cheerleaders don't quite have the arms that, uh, well, the baseball team might. So you need to be in one of the one of the closer rows. Recruit a couple of the softball first from that district winning team. That's, that's exactly what they need to do. Three receivers to the light, one left. Oh, snap ball's on the ground. Crystal City, and I think Crystal City did come away with it. Snap, the, was the quarterback, Hibbets, that jumped on it before St. Pius City. got it. 32 to six is the lead for St. Pius here on top of Crystal City, 20 seconds into the fourth quarter. Substitutions for Crystal City. 11.30 and counting here in the, here left in the contest. Crystal City deep in their own territory at their own 20 yard line. Third and 14 to go. Snap back to Hibbets looking to the right, gonna throw and he hits a man at Saudi. To the right side, still going down the sideline. Saudi is so quick and elusive from that first, the, that first guy just never makes the tackle. It's always the second or third guy that comes in. And that's very impressive too, because he has not dropped a ball all night. He's making that catch, even though they're bearing down on him, and then still making that first man miss with just a little hop or a, a juke to the left or right. Well, he must have stepped out of bounds because that's not as good as the spot as I thought it would get. So it's gonna bring up fourth and five and Crystal City is gonna bring out the punt team. Drake Childers out to attempt the punt for Crystal City. Hennessy and Thornton back to receive the punt for St. Pius. Childers boots it away, end over end kick, bounces at the 43. Thornton will pick it up, up the, up the middle, into St. Pius territory to the 40, down the sideline at the 30, gets past Saudi. he'll be brought him down and brought out of bounds. A nice touchdown saving tackle by Andrew Saudi. That was about a 40 yard return and he broke that by going right up the middle. He just took off as soon as he caught that ball, took off up the middle and then saw a seam to the left side. I think everybody was expecting to go right. He went to the left and picked up about 40 yards on that return. He is quick, isn't he? he yes, he is. Catch up to. So a minute and two seconds into the fourth quarter, St. Pius gets the ball back and with great field position at the Crystal City 19. And St. Pius leads it 32 to six. Hey, remember, if they were to, uh, if they got a touchdown here, that would put them up over 35. The uh, running clock is 35 points in the second half. And so, should they get a touchdown here, that would uh... actually no. I guess that would. They would need to get to 41 points, so they could not put the running clock on here in this possession. They would need another score. Caroli in the shotgun. Handed off to Filer up the middle. Chris cuts the left Chris side. Plenty of room. And a touchdown. I think he was barely touched once. And he just walks into the end zone. A great run by Chris Filer from 14 yards out. Touchdown for Chris Filer. Chris took off. He looked like he was going to go to the right side of the field. And then you just see him lean back to the left. And there he went, back to that corner. Everybody was flowing to the right. He threw his own misdirection play out there on that run to put six up. So that makes it 38 to six. St. Pius on to attempt the extra point. This is Linderer. They have a different kicker for field goals as they do for kickoffs. Linderer, the snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good, and St. Pius goes up 39 to six, and we'll take a minute timeout. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer of Hillsboro is your regional law firm, offering help with many diverse areas of the law. Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer is a full-service law firm and practice with expert, experienced lawyers. When legal representation is a must, you need a law firm that you can trust. So turn to the professionals at Roberts, Wooten, and Zimmer on Highway 21 in Hillsboro. Call 636-797-2693. For more information, log on to robertswootenzimmer.com. Forget everything you thought you knew about buying tires and hurry in and see the gang at Plaza Tire in Festus. Why? Because Plaza Tire customers enjoy Plaza Tire's lowest price pledge. Plaza Tire service will match or beat any competitor's total tire purchase on any comparable tire. Plus tires anytime with hundreds of tires in stock. No appointment necessary on tire installations. That's Plaza Tire, the quick change artist located at 301 Festus Center Drive in Festus. KJFF Festus Crystal City Imperial DeSoto. Linderer on to attempt the, he gives the uh, kickoff. They've actually switched up the uh, the kicking team. Uh, 
For St. Pius earlier, it was Brendan Withrow, but Linderer has taken over the duties. A low kick fielded at the, it was fielded about the 20 yard line and a five yard return for Donovan Williams by Crystal City. And Crystal City will start it with the ball at their own 26 yard line. First and 10, 10.44 remaining in the game. Crystal City trails the St. Pius 39 to six. And now I think we're going to get a timeout called by Crystal City. Crystal City will call a timeout, and so we will take out a timeout as well with Crystal City. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to High School Football on KJFF and KJF Web TV. Hi, this is David McFarland. At McFarland Travel, we are a full-service travel agency specializing in one-on-one -on -one service. We discuss your needs and desires, do our research, and provide you with options all within parameters that you have set. When you book online, you do all the work and then give your hard-earned money to someone you will never meet and without fully knowing what your options are. Shop locally and book safely with McFarland Travel at 206 Main Street in Festus or call us at 9 Three seven five six seven nine or toll free eight 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 four four zero five six seven nine. Rain continuing to uh, fall here ever so lightly though at St. Pius High School on Tommy Self alongside Eric Oberly. The uh, referees they actually put a towel over the ball to keep it dry during the timeout. Just just barely coming down, just sprinkling, just enough to be annoying. That's okay. It's football. Yeah, that's right. What's the point in playing football if you can't get muddy? That's right. You know, it, it needs to be cold and, and wet. Even makes football <laughs> even better, I've always felt. 10.44 remaining here in the contest. 39-6 to 6 is the lead for St. Pius. We can say that. We're in a nice dry booth. I formation here. Hibbett's handed off the middle. This is Donovan Williams with room to run at the 40. Picks up the first down and more to the 35. Brought down from behind. A nice tackle there. Made by number 42 of St. Pius, Mike Cords. And a big pickup on the first down there by Crystal City up to the 45-yard line. About a 25-yard run by the big man there. Took off up that right side, went right between the guard tackle gap and just danced his way the rest of the way through, juking back and forth. So first, first and 10, Crystal from their own 45. One receiver to the left, one to the right. Eye formation here. Hibbets under center. Handing it off, this time he is met immediately. That's Donovan Williams. He is hit immediately. And no gain on the play for Williams. Clock continues to roll, 10-12. And counting here in the final quarter. 39 to six the lead for St. Pius. Actually a loss of a half a yard on the play for Crystal City, second and 10 and a half. Call it second and 11. Crystal City is using this where they actually signal the plays in and the entire team turns to look. St. Pius is one of the few teams that we've seen where they actually run the plays in from the sideline with you know switching guys in and out. That's the old school way. Bring, bring the, the uh, Absolutely. Yeah, Good. they go to the huddle. You normally use your wing back, sw switch him every play. Hands it off up the middle to Prater. He continues to bull forward. He was hit immediately, but he continued to push forward. Good strong run by Keon Prater. And he picks up about six yards on the play. A nice run by the big man. With the size that man, that young man has, it's good to see him just get those shoulders down, get those pads low, and just pound his way through that middle. And you know, Prater is just a junior, so they will have him back next year. Year in the weight room, he is going to be somebody to watch next year. Six-yard pickup for Crystal City. High formation here again. Crystal City, they've switched up their formation. Hand off to Prater. And he was being tackled before he actually got the handoff. No gain on the play for Crystal City. Pius did a good job of there going back and they're rushing that five or that six. What they're doing is they're filling every gap on that offensive line and just taking away that inside running game completely. That'll bring up fourth down for the Crystal City Hornets. They will go for it down 39 to six with 8.35 remaining in the game. And actually they're moving they're moving, they're switching up their formation. It looks like Drake Childers will step back and boot it away for the Hornets. A little surprised here. I would think that. I think that you'd think Crystal City would go for it right here at the 50 yard line, down 39 to 6, but they will boot it away. Great punt. Spiral bounces at the 20, bounces towards the sideline. 
And Crystal City will down it right there at the 20 yard line. A little surprised that uh, Crystal City's not going for it there. I think you're, you're about to run out of time. A little bit, yeah, but they are at the 50 yard line. He probably doesn't want to take a chance on giving St. Pius the ball back half field like that. I think he feels better about his chances of making them go 80 or 85 yards there because they kicked it away from all the returners that time at the sideline, right at the gunner, and didn't give him a chance. So St. Pius will get the ball at their own 20 yard line. First and 10 on the near hash Caroli the St. Pius quarterback will go back to work two receivers to the left side one to the right one man in the backfield next to his to his left Caroli going to take it himself following the blocker on the left off tackle good pick up there by Caroli six or seven yards on the play they don't call Mickey's a number very often but when he does get the ball he makes the most of it He's uh, one play, he's lost a little bit of yardage on. Other than that, he's averaging seven to eight yards a carry. He does a good job when he does get to carry the ball. Second and four coming up for St. Pius from the 26. Rain picks up a little bit. Caroli going to throw it down to the flat to Thornton. Shakes the tackler. And that, no, that tackler's going to bring him down. That's Childers. On the tackle, no gain on the play for Thornton. That was a very good job by the young man to read that flat screen pattern they were trying to run right there. Just ran right out there with him, let him make the catch, just brought him down, no gain. Rain picking up a little bit here. You can actually hear it on the roof here of this tiny press box here at St. Pius High School. And it looks like some of the fans are starting to shift. Some of them might be leaving here as the rain is picking up a little bit more. We were talking about that earlier. This is the way football should be. We're in a nice dry booth. Caroli throws it out to Thornton. Picks up the first down and more down the sideline. Steps out of bounds. Going to be a little bit shorter than it looked like, but he does pick up the first down, a gain of seven on the play. Thornton picks up the first down. That's basically the same exact play they ran last time. Thornton was looking for a lot more there, but unfortunately he stepped out of bounds and he knew it. They like that quick hit to the outside. 39 to six, the lead for St. Pius, 6.49 remaining. Clock is stopped after Thornton stepped out of bounds. I would have been surprised if St. Pius holds it on, holds on to it the rest of the game, the way that they slowly move the ball. Throw out to Hennessy, incomplete at the 37 yard line. Hennessy saying he had it, but the pass from Caroli was a little low. Hennessy couldn't scoop it up. He's obviously a receiver, as I've been telling you. He, he caught it, he's sure of it. That'll bring up second and 10, St. Pius from the 30, excuse me, 34 yard line, 33 yard line. Two receiver to the right side, one to the left. Caroli in the shotgun, looking right, rolling right, throws it out to Thornton in the flat, spin move at the 40, hit and brought down by Saudi. A nice shake and make there by Thornton. Gonna be shy of the first down, but a good tackle there by Andrew Saudi. That spin move is what got him the extra four yards. That would only be a four yard pass play if he doesn't put that 360 spin move on, turns it into eight yards. Third and one for St. Pius. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Caroli in the shotgun, hands it off to Filer up the middle, breaks a nice tackle, picks up the first down and more into Crystal City territory. A big strong run there by Crystal City. We get a final from DeSoto. St. Genevieve wins 49 to 21 in the Battle of the Dragons. Tyler did a good job there of finding that gap between the center and the guard. Same thing, he looked like he was starting out to go to the right, took it back to the left side, ran his own misdirection there to pick up the first down. First and 10 into Crystal City territory. Crowley rolling to his left, hits Hennessy in the flat, and a flag down on the play. And Hennessy's gonna be close to the first down, but the flag came out after the pass was out and they, it was thrown towards the line of scrimmage. Did that come from the back judge on that it did, or the side yeah. judge? It came from the back judge. That's unusual to see that call there on folding. He must have seen something backside there. And it, you know, he threw it after the, uh, the, the throw is out. I mean, it might have been might have been just a little bit of a late flag. Well, he's got a pretty good arm. He threw it from about 25 yards away, so it took a while to get there. It was interesting to see that play because you, you normally don't see that play. And it looked like the play, all the offensive and defensive line right there in the middle had pretty much ended because they were all looking downfield. But taking that long, it looks like they're going to march St. Pius back about another 10 yards. And Pius was doing a little better on the uh, second half here with the penalties, but they've picked up a couple here in, the, in, this, uh, in the fourth quarter now. 
So that'll bring up a first and 21 for St. Pius. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Caroli in the gun, looking to the left, throws to Hennessy in the flat, and it's dropped. The throw is a little bit low. You know, Crowley, he's a pretty good quarterback, but we've seen that a couple times. Those those throws in the flat, he's, he's, he's left his throws a little bit low, hard to scoop up. He has. It looks like he's falling away a little bit instead of uh, stepping into those pass patterns because they're trying to throw this quick hit off of about a three- or four-step drop, and he's really not planting his feet, and his throws have come up a little short on that quick hit or trying to run that quick in route or a quick screen route with two players to the outside. Second and 20. Handoff up the middle, and he is stuffed immediately. No gain on the play for St. Pius on the carry. Goes to number 49, Chris Filer. That is Filer. He is hit immediately. 39-6 to six the lead no for St. Pius, 5-35 and counting in the contest. Crystal City really did move their four down linemen in a lot tighter together, and they have shut down that interior running game quite a bit. They're doing a good job on the interior defensive line there. We'll see if they stay with that or if Pius continues to try to take it right up the middle or if they try to go to the wide side of the field now because they've been playing a lot to the short side of the field. Third down and 21 here for St. Pius. Tight formation. One receiver out to the left side. Handed off up the middle. Is That's to Irvin with room to run. Cutting to the sideline at the 50. Stiff arm to the 45 out of bounds and into Crystal City, City territory. Irvin picking up 14 on that play. Unfortunately for that young man, he had to run a long way to get those last two or three yards to pick up that first down. Good run there by Lance Servin, but he's going to be shy of the first down. Going to be shy by about six yards. Ball at the Crystal City 45 needed to get to the 39. Under five minutes remaining to play here at St. Pius High School. 39-6 to the lead for the Lancers. They go back to that wing T formation. Two tight ends, one receiver to the left side, three men in the backfield. Caroli under center, fourth down. Caroli dropping back to pass, going to throw it out to the flat to Irvin, and he's going to get dropped immediately. No gain on the play, and St. Pius is going to turn it over on downs. Probably not the throw that you wanted to make here to Irvin. That was a very unusually developing play. They were trying to run that screen, but Crystal City really didn't bite on it. They stayed in their lanes. They showed good discipline on the edges again right there to really break up that play. He had no place to go. That's a very dangerous pass there. That could easily have been a pick six. So Crystal City gets the ball on the turnover and downs by St. Pius. That's the, is that the third time they've gone for it on fourth down and turned it over? I believe it is. Crystal Kitty gets, gets it with the ball at the 40, their own 45-yard line. But the Hornets trail at 39 to six. I think they're one for three. I think they did get one fourth down. I'll believe you. 4.53 remaining. Handoff up the middle to Donovan Williams with room to run. Breaks an ankle tackle at the 35. Chased down. Trison Thornton brings him down in the open field. He chased him down, but a big pickup and a first down by Crystal City deep into St. Pius territory. He exploded right up the middle on that play and just took off. Started breaking three, two, three ankle tackles. People diving at his feet. Thornton, who actually came on the field late on that play because he wasn't out there for defense, is the one who saved the touchdown on that play. Yes. Takes it up to the St. Pius 29-yard line. First and 10 for Crystal City. Threatening to score here again. The clock continues to roll 40-46 and counting. Pius up 39-6. High formation here for Hibbets. One tied in. They hand it off to Williams running right side. And he won't get much. Maybe a yard on the play. Rain slowing up a little bit. Still still drizzling a little bit. I don't even know if you can call it rain. More of a mist, on, a heavy mist. Gain of one on the play for Crystal City. Second and nine. And the Hornets look over to the sideline for the play call. Four minutes and counting. <coughs> Receiver to the right, one to the left, tied into the left side. I formation, Hibbets dropping back. Look at the throw, ball gets loose, it's on the ground. Ball's on the ground, but I think Crystal City recovered. Jesse Eimer recovers the fumble for Crystal City. That, that was a really good job by the, the uh, five front defensive players for St. Pius. They just drove, they lined up heads up and just drove their player straight back into the quarterback. There was just no place to go for him on that one. Excuse me, Eimer forced the, file, the fumble. It was Tyler Fricky who recovered it, the left guard for Crystal City. So that brings up third down and about 13 to go for Crystal City. Under three minutes to play 
Excuse me, under four minutes to play, 320 and counting. High formation again here for Crystal City. At the St. Pius 31, handoff to Williams, hits the pile, and he is pushed back with nowhere to go for Donovan Williams. St. Pius stood him up. That would be a half sack for six of the defensive players, <laughs> or a half tackle for six of the players on the St. Pius defense. They're doing a good job of just plugging those gaps. They're sending five on every play and just shooting the gaps on the Crystal City Hornets. That will bring up fourth down for Crystal City. They will obviously go for it down 39-6 to 47 remaining and counting. Crystal City with the ball at the St. Pius 34. Same formation here. High formation. Prater is the fullback. Tight end to the left side, receivers to the right and left. Hibbets dropping back, looking right. Got to throw it, and he unloads it. And he hits the man in the flat and in motion. That is Joe Ross. But he is going to be well shy of the force down. They needed to get 15. He got about five. And Crystal City turns it over on downs. And St. Pius will get it. 222 remaining here in the game. 39 to 6 is the lead for the Lancers. The last few drives, Hibbets has actually had a couple of a couple of drives where he's been able to step back and actually set his feet. They're doing a little better job of protecting him right now when he can actually throw the ball. And he's starting to find some receivers. He's uh Started out this game 0 for 4, then through an interception. He's actually made three completions in a row now that he's got a couple of seconds back there. First and 10, St. Pius. They take her off on downs from their own 26-yard line. Tight formation here, handing off. Now they reverse it again. This is running around the right side. Caroli and Filer out there blocking. Plenty of room to run down the sideline. A nice touchdown saving ankle tackle made by Christy, Crystal City. Anthony Hogue with the carry, the big carry for St. Pius. That was a heck of a run. He had two lead blockers out there leading the path for him. That tackle right there by the ankle, it absolutely is probably going to go for six if he doesn't make that tackle right there. He just, he just reaches out and swats his ankles away. 25-yard run. That's a good way to have your first run of the night that's, that's with two good. lead blockers out there leading the way for you. St. Pius with the ball at their own 49, first and 10. Under two minutes remaining. Caroli takes the snap, fakes the flip, hands it off to Hogue again, up the middle at the 45 to the 40, brought down at the 35, another good run by Chris Hogue. Anthony Hogue, excuse me, not Chris Hogue, Anthony Hogue. St. Pius must have been saving him for the fourth quarter, where the D bounced down a little bit, put in Anthony Hogue and let him rip. Two plays, 41 yards, that's not a bad rushing average there. First and 10, St. Pius, 90 seconds remaining in the contest, and they lead it 39 to 6. On. One receiver to the left side, three men in the backfield, Caroli under center, tight end to the right side. Caroli hands it off, now they reverse it to Hogue, same play, but going to the left side, gets a block, trips up, and he is brought down, a nice tackle made there by Zach Cheney of Crystal City. But Hogue, I think, is going to pick up another first down. That's that handoff and reverse play we saw several times from St. Pius in the first half. They broke it out here again in the first quarter, in the fourth quarter with Anthony Hogue. Very effective running by Mr. Hogue. One twelve and counting. St. Pius with the ball, first and ten in Crystal T City territory at the Crystal twenty-four yard line. Crystal City is going to go into victory formation. And I think that's just going to about do it. Crystal City, excuse me, St. Pius is just going to kneel on it with 109 to go, now with 50 and counting. They get the first down, so I think that's going to do it. So with the win today, St. Pius is going to win. Valley Catholic also won. Both those teams 5-0 and in the I-55 Conference. And that sets up a big I-55 Conference championship game next Friday down at Valley Catholic. St. Pius will be there, so we, we will be there as well on KJFF. So St. Pius will take the victory. They're just going to have to kneel on this one more time. They get set up. Caroli under center, taking all kinds of time. And he will kneel on it one more time, and that is going to do it. 39-6 to six is the victory for St. Pius on top of Crystal City. The big rivalry game, and St. Pius gets their first victory over Crystal City for the first time since 2003.
That's a heck of a homecoming for St. Pius. They really came out in the second half. They made the corrections that they needed to. They knocked off the really dumb penalties, the unsportsmanlike conduct, things like that. St. Pius, it was all about St. Pius in that second half, defensively and offensively. They were very, very effective and did a great job in that second half. The fireworks go off here at St. Pius High School. They are setting them off there down the uh, left side. Some of them are going to the, left, to the uh, sideways. And as we do to get that happens, the rain picks up a little bit. So 39 to 6, the final here from St. Pius High School. Thank you for listening to KJFF. We will send it to the, uh, we will, well, that is going to do it for us. Hope you'll soon stay tuned for End Zone later on here on Regional Radio. I'm Tommy Self for Eric Oberly, Corey Johnson on the camera here. Kat Kearley, Renee Bernal back in our KJF studios. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.